but I think the development of full artificial intelligence will spell the end of the human race. It's a flying object, and we don't know what it is. I would hope somebody is checking it out. I'm glad the Pentagon is looking at this, because if it poses a threat, I want them on top of it. Well, the craft generates its own gravitational field. So you said there's lights in the sky? The internet has become the command center for criminals and terrorists. That's, that's what we're instructed to say. Roswell, Area 51, alien kept deep under the ground. Radio. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and this show goes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific. And well, what is this show about, you may wonder? Well, let me tell you. It's about all the things we're not allowed to talk about. You know what they are? Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, the 24-hour news cycle, propaganda, and the general feeling that we live in the upside down. And of course, as we do this, we do this live. We do this live to include you. That's part of the entire thing because this is less of a show. This is more of a conversation between friends, between a community, between people that are trying to understand better the world we live in. And of course, you can do that many ways. You can study. You can read. You can well, you can congregate, you can tell stories, you can spend time with other people, you can get to know why people are different and why that's a valuable thing and not a uh, something to be maligned or something to be weaponized politically. And that's what this show is about. It's about that and all those things. And like I said, more a conversation, less of a show. And uh, uh, our secret weapon has always been you, right? Uh, I always say this, and this is absolutely true. I'm me, you're you, but together we're us. And it turns into something much more robust and much more uh, flourishing as a as an entity together than it is uh, just sitting in a room by yourself, kind of mumbling in the corner. And uh, this is this is where we get together and do that, uh, minus the mumbling. We get together and talk about all those crazy things I said at the top of the hour here. And uh, well, and our, like I said, our secret weapon is you. So if you want to be part of the show tonight, of course we're taking your phone calls at seven zero two nine five seven one zero three seven. That's seven zero two nine five seven one zero three seven. You can click the discord link at troubledminds.org that's the official website and uh discord of course is a chat client it's a voice client i'm watching all the uh, the chats in all the different places all the places i described actually i didn't describe those places yet but i am watching the discord in or the chat in discord and uh all the rest of this so we so where else are we streaming by the way uh, we are streaming on rockfin youtube d live and twitter and of course we're broadcasting live on the fringe fm so if you want to join the discord 
Discord for Fringe, please do at fringe.fm slash chat. That will give you a direct invite there. The Troubled Minds Discord is at troubledminds.org. Click the Discord link. Easy as that. And uh, again, uh, Discord's a chat client, voice client, completely free. We're not sponsored by them. It's just an amazing program. It's a way to actually bring people together instead of tearing them apart. I'm talking to you, Facebook. I'm talking to you, technocrats. I'm talking to you, Twitter. I'm talking to you, all the places that reward engagement by people crapping on each other. That's what I'm talking about. This is not what this world needs to be, and that's why I fully and entirely reject it. We should find excuses to embrace each other, find excuses to give to give each other the benefit of the doubt, find excuses to honor thy neighbor instead of crapping on thy neighbor. And that's, uh, there you go. I believe that fully, and uh, I think that uh, diversity is one of those things that should actually be celebrated, not weaponized. So there you go. little stab at the political elite. Yeah, I'm talking to you, you uh, senators and house people. I'm talking to you, you race baiters. Knock that crap off. It pisses me off. Anyway, I digress a little bit here. But uh, okay, so the way this show goes is exactly that. Like I said, we're, uh, we're, we do this uh, in this particular format because uh, I can learn a lot. You can learn a lot. We can learn a lot together by sharing ideas, by sharing stories. And that's what the show's about tonight. Well, we're going to start tonight with a little bit of bad news. Um, unfortunately, one of my favorite authors ever, and uh, I've, I've been ribbed for this because, uh, you know, some of my guy friends have been like, oh, you like you like reading that? Ha 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 ha. Those are girls books, Mike. No, no. Uh, Anne Rice, unfortunately, passed away over this past weekend, and uh, she was a magnificent writer. She had a, a gift and uh, like a generational type gift. And it's one of those things that you don't quite understand what I'm saying unless you've actually read the books. And so kind of doing a tribute to Anne Rice is difficult without really delving into a bunch of uh, some of the mythologies she helped weave. She helped create. She helped not only uh, add on to the legend of the vampire mythology, she uh, she kept it alive for the next generation. And that's what this really is about. This, this show tonight is about not just honoring Anne Rice uh, and, and the amazing work she did, the great storytelling. This show tonight is going to be about... What about folklore? What about the tradition, the oral tradition and the written tradition of storytelling? And is there still a place for that in a technocratic world where they would tweak the algorithms to make us hate each other instead? And so uh, that's what's going on. Yeah. So, so, yeah, unfortunately, over the weekend, yeah, Anne Rice did pass away. We'll get to that in just a sec and get, you know, get to, get you some details. Um, but if you haven't read her books, I'm telling you, you are missing out. You are absolutely missing out. She was brilliant and uh, just just had a way. She had a flair about writing that you it's not something you just learn it's 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 something that she was born with a gift and uh, as she began uh, doing her vampire lestat stories which we'll get to tonight as well a little bit uh, just to just to make some comparisons to the modern times i'm not going to spoil too much but uh, a point is that uh, these books are you know 1976 we're talking 40 plus years now so it is one of those situations where sorry 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 if you're going to get some spoilers but these stories are extremely old uh, and not only that she took some of these stories the mythologies of the vampire Empire, and not only brought them into the next generation with things like, of course, uh, uh, Twilight, like I said in the news story, uh, the news show today, uh, things like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, like uh, things like uh, Midnight Mass. Think, you know, there's a whole lot of things I see today in the vampire horror genre, including Blade, including um, what's the other one with uh, with um, uh, tw- uh, not Twilight. Um, anyway, uh, with uh, Kate Beckinsale, I can't remember the name of the, the series. But point being is that a lot of the lore that you find in some of these fictional stories are actually uh, from from Anne Rice. Like she she took the vampire legend and completely and totally turned it on its head and expanded it in a way that nobody's done since Bram Stoker, right? And so, basically, tonight what I'm talking about is is, well, not just Anne Rice. We're going to get to that, and yes, we're, we're going to honor Anne Rice tonight. Underworld, thank you. Thank you, James. Uh, but we're not going to, we're, we are going to honor Anne Rice tonight. But we're also going to look at the tradition of storytelling. And does it still have a place in a technocratic world where there is, uh, well, uh, just, just again, the whole bit of, uh, for, okay, for instance, check this out. Let's give a nice uh, differing take on uh, what I'm talking about, all right? Now, specifically, if you look in the, a lot of the, 
the, the division media and the press and all the rest of the stuff that you normally see, uh, you'll see things like um, division politics, right? Because they want us divided. That's the whole point. All right. That's that's the whole thing that really makes me mad about all that stuff that's going on right now. Not just, it's been going on since the, the dawn of time, but it's been hot and heavy the last you know six, eight, ten years. It's been pretty insane. But the thing that really drives me mad is things like uh, well, uh, you know, uh, kind of crapping on entire generations, like you know, uh, blaming the millennials for the problems of the world, right? Or uh, in 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 the other angle blaming you know the quote boomers for for the problems of the world and the the thing is that well both of those takes are short-sighted they're discriminatory and they're divisive and there's no reason to malign an entire generation i don't care what your politics are all right and so you get this in the media these guys kind of flinging mud and poo and everything back and forth at each other for what reason again it's control right it's we talked about that ad nauseum on this show for for years now because that's what they want from us they want us hating each other dividing lines all the intersectionality of hate is exactly what they want but Look, now this is this is a difference and this is what I'm talking about tonight. Anne Rice passed away at the age of 80 years old this past weekend, okay? And well, you know, you some might call her a boomer, right? So, you know, some some might politically try and malign her for this that or the other thing cuz she's she's, you know, part of a generation that is the problem of the world, right? I disagree entirely. I reject that notion entirely. And if we can't respect our elders, we certainly can't respect ourselves. All right. And that's my take on this. And I'm, I'm not backing off of that. Like, if you want to try and gaslight me into becoming a bigot, well, find, find somebody else because I ain't going to do it. Uh, so instead, right, instead of maligning a generation and, you know, call, uh, millennials, boomers, whatever you want to say. I hate the term boomer, by the way. It's baby boomer. Uh, but, but anyway, I digress a little bit. But point being, right, is instead, instead of that hate and division, how about we honor somebody? that was actually incredibly talented, that had a gift to tell us stories, to take our brains to other places, right? Well, and that's what we're doing tonight. So it is, it is with, uh, with, with a heavy heart and bad news. Uh, one of my favorite writers ever, Anne Rice, did pass away this past weekend. And uh, it's, um, uh, it is one of the, one of the, the early, the early uh, series of books that I read that really turned me into, uh, well, uh, you know, a, a wannabe storyteller. I'm not going to say I can even hold a candle to Anne Rice. But, you know, you, you start to dabble. You start to write fiction. You start to consider the world world as a possible place differently than has ever been imagined before. And it's it's sort of an expansion of the mind reading her books. Like I said, uh, I'm sure there's probably going to be a run on her books right now because Again, if, if anybody needs to be revisited and celebrated in this, uh, you know, the last, uh, you know, 30, 40 years of, of actual fiction, in my opinion, Anne Rice is one of them. Cl- clearly, there's more, but she, she is definitely one of my favorites. So, so we'll get to that. And uh, so lo- love to hear your thoughts tonight. So the question is this, right? Here's where we begin. We're going to talk about Anne Rice a little bit. We're going to talk about her vampire series a little bit. But also, what I want to know is this. The question for tonight, and there's going to be several, but this is where we begin. All right. Is storytelling still essential in a culture, in a world driven by Wikipedia, engagement algorithms that would have us hate each other, and, well, things like vampires and uh, esoterics and all kinds of different legends, mythologies, and folklore being called fake news in a world of fake news, is it still important, the oral tradition and the written tradition of storytelling. And of course, you know what I'm going to say, because that's the reason I'm talking about Anne Rice tonight. I'm talking about her because she influenced an entire generation, an entire world. I think she sold 150 million books. I mean, that's a lot of books. That's a lot of books. Count to a million one time. She sold 150 million books. And uh, well, so that's what's on my mind tonight. And that's the question. Is there room in a digital world that's introducing the metaverse, that's using the media to cascade, brainwash, and divide us, is there room for storytelling? And storytelling itself, is there a value that can bridge generation to generation? And that's the question tonight. Clearly, you know where I stand on this because I'm, I'm here. I'm speaking in a microphone almost every night 
All right. So clearly you understand the power of the spoken word to me and what it means to me that words matter, that words are spellcraft, that spellcraft can be used for good or evil. Right. And the rest of this. And that's what this is about tonight. This is not about any of the rest of that. It's about speaking at each other. It's about respecting each other. It's about telling stories to each other. It's about pressing the next generation to not hate the previous generation. All right. And that's what that's about. That's what this is about tonight. So if you want to be part of the show, the number to call is 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And you can uh, join the discord at troubledminds.org. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, this stuff. This stuff matters. You know, this stuff matters to me. And uh, like I said, I'm here speaking into a microphone. So you know where I stand on this. But um, love to hear your thoughts. What else is out there that has inspired you? Uh, besides Anne Rice, if you've never read her books, like I said in the the uh, the news show today her the movies that they made off of her books the interview with the vampire uh they made um uh, queen of the damned they were both kind of garbage um they uh, you know my opinion they were just the book is or the, the movie's never as good as the book and in particular uh the Anne rice movies were literally paled by comparison like we're talking 10 percent good to how actually amazing those those novels were so so anyway all right so let's go to the news the unfortunate news of this weekend and uh, this is from uh, AP. Anne Rice, who breathed new life into vampires, dies at age 80. All right. Uh, Anne Rice, the novelist whose lush, best selling gothic tales, including Interview with the Vampire, reinvented the blood drinking immortals as tragic anti heroes, has died. She was 80 years old. Uh, Rice died late Saturday due to complications from a stroke. Her son, Christopher Rice, announced on her Facebook page and his Twitter page. And I'll read his uh, full statement in just a moment because it's, it's pretty touching. Um, like as much as I admire Anne Rice as a writer, you can tell that um, from from uh, her son learned a ton from her and uh, has a has a way with words as well. So we'll get to his full statement and I'll read some of that in a sec. Uh, but OK, Rice's 1976 novel Interview with the Vampire was later adapted with the script by Rice into the 1994 movie directed by Neil Jordan and starring Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt, which many of us have seen. Like I said, it's OK. It's not great. But that really wasn't her best book anyway. It was her first. So so anyway. All right. And uh, let's see. So it's also set to be adapted again in an upcoming TV series on AMC and AMC Plus set to premiere next year. So I, when I heard that news, I was pretty excited, hoping that they would do it right, because I would love to see Anne Rice proper come to uh, any screen, the big screen, the little screen, any screen in between, because those movies were just really flawed, let's say. Um, but anyway, uh, so uh, Interview with the Vampire, in which reporter Daniel Molloy interviews Louis Dupont du Dulac. I can't, there's a lot of French in here, so you'll have to forgive me. I don't speak a lick of French. Uh, so literally pardon my French was Rice's first novel but over the next five decades she would write more than 30 books and sell more than 150 million copies worldwide 13 of those were part of the Vampire Chronicles uh, begun with her 1976 debut long before Twilight True Blood and uh, all the rest of this Blade and uh, uh, Underworld like we said there Rice introduced sumptuous romance female sexuality and queerness Many took Interview with the Vampire as an allegory for homosexuality to the supernatural genre. And I never picked up on that. I mean, clearly she was a very extremely erotic writer. Uh, she did have uh, some other um, erotica she wrote under different names. And I didn't, I've never read that stuff, Exit to Eden, things like that. But um, the weirdness is that that uh, she just had a way, a way with that spoken word, like I said. And I said this earlier, and this is how I describe Anne Rice. When, when people ask, or, you know, when the topic comes up to me, she could write for, you know, three pages about the curtains and the curtain rod. And you're still just transfixed. You can't stop reading. It's, it's insane. And, and you're literally just sort of sucked into every single detail she's describing like you try and do that it's it's one of those things where you know telling the story and the action and the suspense and all the rest of the stuff it, it, some of it's easy but some of it is an art form and uh she for sure had this art form on lockdown she was very 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 good so it is it does um so i was talking to a night stalker a couple nights ago and i was like hey man uh any any ideas on vampire you know seeds or threads because you know ann rice just passed away and 
And uh, but I, before before he even answered me, I'm like, I got it, I got it, I got it. Thank you again to Night Stalker and the rest of the community. You guys know who you are that uh, that hang out in the the after channel uh, when we do when we do the shows that kind of do the after party that help with uh, some of these show themes because uh, a lot of this is pretty rich. It's pretty deep in that um, you know when we do a show here, we've always said it's a non linear type thing. It's one of those open ended conversations that uh, we can take anywhere at, at, at the, the drop of a hat. We'll turn on a dime and uh, well, okay, we'll, we'll start on the earth and we'll end up in the uh, the multiverse or we'll end up in a dream state or we'll end up somewhere in between. And that's okay by me because if you lock everything down into this particular uh, you know set of realities uh, g- given to us by you know a media elite. Uh, What's the point? What's the point? Let us dream our own dreams, please. And uh, that should be a T-shirt as well. And so, so anyway, uh, this, is, this is pretty, like I said, pretty bad news. I'm going to read you the statement from her son, and then we're going to get to folklore and some of the rest of the stuff tonight. So again, the unfortunate news this past weekend is Anne Rice passed away. And this is a statement from her son. Dearest people of Page, he published this to Facebook. This is Anne's son, Christopher, and it breaks my heart to bring you this sad news. Earlier tonight, Anne passed away due to complications resulting from a stroke. She left us almost 19 years to the day. My father, her husband Stan, also died. The immensity of our family's grief cannot be overstated. As my mother, her support for me was unconditional. She taught me to embrace my dreams, reject conformity, and challenge the dark voices of fear and self-doubt. As a writer, she taught me to defy genre boundaries and surrender to my obsessive passions. In her final hours, I sat beside her hospital bed in awe of her accomplishments and her courage, awash in memories of a life that took us from the fog-laced hills of the San Francisco Bay Area to the magical streets of New Orleans. New Orleans, sorry. Uh, it's It's not New Orleans, it's New Orleans. To the twinkling vistas of Southern California. As she, as she kissed Anne goodbye, her younger sister Karen said, What a ride you took us on, kid. I think we can all agree. Let us take comfort in the shared hope that Anne is now experiencing firsthand the glorious answers to many great spiritual and cosmic questions, the quest for which defined her life and career. And there's more here, but we'll get to some of this a little bit later. It's uh, it chokes me up a little bit. I got to be honest. It's um, it's uh, Anne Rice is a hero of mine. She's um, like I said, there uh, there's there's telling uh, telling stories, and then there's sort of locking in a uh, your own mythology. There's uh, inspiring generations. It's um, it, it's tough. It's tough for me. It's one of those ones that uh, you know. It's like when your hero passes away. And she was one of mine for sure, uh, an inspiring writer and, uh, again, uh, encouraging us to dream our own dreams. And uh, for that, I, um, I thank her and all of her hard work. And, uh, you know, I hope she's in a better place now. Um, so there we go. Uh, let's see. I uh, got you. I see the news. Okay. So, so that's what's on my mind tonight. And uh, like I said, it, it's, it's a little bit tough for me because she is a hero of mine. But, uh, you know, like it is still, you know, uh, life goes on. We still have things we need to do, things we need to accomplish, uh, bonds we need to create for the future and generations to hopefully inspire. So as we continue tonight, I'm looking to hear from you and your thoughts. Do you think the written word? Do you think the spoken word still has a place in a digital world that is, well, an avalanche of chaos? Do you think that somehow, some way, us, mere mortals, with just a microphone or a pen or a keyboard or what have you, still has the power to inspire generations and bring people together? And uh, more and more, well, you know me, stand me up at the gates of hell and I won't back down. Be unafraid. However... Well, is it still possible? Is this going to be taken away from us? And that's what's on my mind tonight. Love to hear your thoughts on this. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. We're talking about Anne Rice. We're talking about the story, the magic of storytelling. And is there still a place in the future for people like us? Dream your own dreams. More trouble lines on the way. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and we are streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter. And we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. Tonight, we're taking your phone calls as we discuss the passing of Anne Rice, the power of storytelling, and can this bridge generations? Love to hear your thoughts on this. You can reach us at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. We'll put you on the phone, and uh, we will do that. Hang tight, James. We're going to get to you. We'll go to Joseph real quick first on the phone, and we'll get to James. we got Joseph on. Actually, uh, never mind. Joseph hung up. We're going to go straight to James. Uh, I don't know. Like, there's a lot here, right? There's a whole lot to consider with this. And like I said, it uh, it does kind of um, hit me in, in the spot, in the feels. You know what I mean? Because. Uh, there are uh, there are people that should be honored. There are people that should be. Uh, we should celebrate them. We should celebrate the their ability to through storytelling be able to bring these generations together. So let's go. Let's go to our good buddy James in uh, on Discord. James in uh, Michigan. What's up, my friend? Welcome to Troubled Minds. You are on the show. What's going on, my man? Uh, not much. Just uh, very interested in this topic. Um, as I said in the chat, I've been writing all my life, just about, most of my life anyway, and uh, so it's, um, sorry to hear about uh, Miss, Mrs. Rice's passing, but uh, hopefully, hopefully she's inspired others to keep on going. And that is what it's all about, isn't it? It's uh, one of those things that, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it is big shoes to fill. She's, uh, she will be missed, and... But but it doesn't mean, right? It doesn't mean we can't stop. We can't stop trying. Just because uh, we're standing on the shoulders of giants and the rest of this, we've talked about uh, vampire mythologies and a, and a bunch of this stuff. But but with her in particular, uh, she, she expanded it. She took that old Bram Stoker story and, and turned it into literally just an old kind of folklore into a full-on fleshed-out mythology that goes all the way back to the Egyptians and like the heart of where vampires came from. And clearly, we're talking stories. We're talking fiction. But... Uh, it's pretty wild to me that when you kind of delve into some of these um, mysteries that she's she's kind of etched out as sort of it's kind of like quasi fiction a little bit because she she weaves it into history and some of the you know anthropology and stuff like that. It's it's good stuff anyway. Have you ever read Anne Rice, James? I have not. I um I stuck mainly to science fiction as a kid, and. Um, and then once I got older, I, I really stuck to Stephen King a lot. Um, so, but I, I've, I mean, obviously I've heard, it's one of those names I've, I've heard her name, you know, ever since I was able to read books. So I've always known that she was one of the, uh, one of the top writers, basically, you know, really well-known writer. Yeah, and I, I think she's one of those instances, right? Like, you can say a lot about, you know, particular writers that make it or become famous. And, you know, and they're not amazing. They're they're talented, but they're not, like, generational-type talents, you know? There's a lot of that that goes around when, you know, something like, uh, I don't know, I don't want to compare it and kind of crap on other writers because they're, they're out there doing God's work also, doing the best they can, you know? Same here, same here. You know, you could kind of don't want to crap on any individual like that. But, you know, there are some out there that, you know, everybody says, oh, you got to read this, you got to read this, you got to read this. And then you do and you're like this is all right you know like, <laughs> like what's 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 with the hype uh but man like like if, if you get a chance james if you're you're still into doing the reading thing and devouring novels man uh g- do some man rice it's uh it's amazing stuff but yeah so so you said yourself you're a writer uh so 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 what is it what is it about writing what is it about the written word what is it about the oral tradition and storytelling that's special to you I think it's just just the the act of telling or sharing a story. I think that stories are important, especially when they're fiction, because they may be fiction in that the events didn't happen maybe as they appear in the story. But I really do think that that writing is is a, a amazing mix. Uh, or it's an amazing way to take your ideas and thoughts. That and take events that have happened in in real life and change them and and rework them and see what I don't know what what thought what other ideas. It's almost like a way to just keep advancing ideas and thought in a way. 
and it's it's it, whether it's fiction or not it's it's but there, it's yeah i don't even know how to describe it it's really not, there's really nothing like it and it doesn't even matter if you're if you're you know known as the best or or not one of the best there's it's something that i'll never stop doing i'll i'll never stop writing even though um you know i'm not famous for it i don't it doesn't matter I, I do like writing yeah it's not about being famous anyway right it's, i think yeah i think being famous is one of those things that happens by accident you know like you, you you chase the dream you put 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 it out there and you know if like the zeitgeist catches up with you because we're way ahead of them my brother <laughs> way ahead of those guys but if the zeitgeist catches up to us at some point then uh you know that's that's the way these things go it's kind of right place at right time but uh if you're not putting it out there then you can't you nobody will ever find you and we'll get to some of that too i've got some pretty amazing allegories with a lot of the stories she tells uh, um, with uh, the, the particular uh, vampires and some of these other things. And oddly enough, uh, this one uh, you may dig, James, is that uh, the vampire Lestat was her 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 creation. Her uh, He was central to the entire thing, and he was basically a rogue vampire in a world of vampires that had a very um, sort of uh, hierarchy, right? Like an actual, um, the rest of that kind of built into to their whole history. There's some do's and don'ts that vampires should or shouldn't do and things like this. And the vampire Lestat himself was a rule breaker and he was completely unafraid to try everything and uh, it was sort of that kind of that like like wild streak in him that really turned this whole thing upside down but it, it does give me that whole um, when I always say you know be not afraid uh, it, it's at the heart of what the vampire Lestat actually is pretty good stuff but um, it definitely like the be not afraid bit is is well uh, I, I think we should consider that more often anyway I think for sure but uh, yeah so I'm not sure I had a question there I was just kind of rambling but <laughs> yeah no it's I, I think it's amazing when writers come up with either characters or, or like you said mythologies i mean i i instantly think of like um J.R.R. tolkien you know and the lord of the rings series and even um people that know stephen king i mean he has a whole basically a whole multi multiple a multiverse that that contains a lot of his books and um it's really amazing when writers can do that and it's 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 um it's it definitely you know it's i don't know if there's something to that it's, it's amazing when when you find something that works for you that you really are into um so yeah i definitely found that with stephen king and but and it is not an easy thing to create that kind of a that kind of a situation yeah, that seamless universe that has its own sort of mythology. Yeah, pr pretty crazy stuff. It's um, I don't know. Like I said, I, I think I think we should cherish uh, folks like this, people that are trailblazing, people that are really have a talent. And I mean, you know, I haven't read a ton of Stephen King, but I've read some of his early books. But it's not, you know, like I don't know. Is he Anne Rice level? Maybe I haven't read enough to really even make it. But I, I think comparing people is probably not even the thing here. It's just you know honoring people that are trying to. Uh, do exactly this to maybe bridge these generations through storytelling. Now, this is the crazy part about this and why I'm talking about this tonight is that um, not so not only like Anne Rice and another self passing away. It's a sad story. But is it enough right to talk about for three hours? Probably not. But I think the thing that she brought to our imaginations and to uh, the rest of the world, sort of in that dream state, like I said, you know, gave us the courage to dream for ourselves, is um, is what this is all about. And her, again, Bram Stoker, that vampire, to that previous generation, to the current generation, we have Buffy, we have Underworld, we have all the rest of these things we're talking about. It's uh, now, now it's in our lap, isn't it? It's in our lap to kind of pass it on to the next. And again, not saying we'll ever have the same um, uh, clout or talent as somebody like Anne Rice, but it's still, it's, somebody needs to pass the torch, don't they? Uh, yes, and it needs to, it, we need to be allowed to do that, as you were hinting at in the beginning of the show. Um, and whether that's written, in written or spoken word, I I, I feel like, and, I, I, and I'm sure this is probably true for a lot of people that do any kind of, either, um, like any kind of podcast or any kind of show's that's that's an important thing to be able to do as well um 
I just I, I, that's another part of what I, I, why I love what I, doing what I'm doing now is I get to share uh, stories of experiences and they're, but they're stories but they're, they're stories of what people believe they've experienced at the very least and then the people that listen to my podcast and I get to talk about those experiences and I think stories that's, a, that's another thing it's, it's a way to I guess as I already said to, to keep, I, keep, your, your, keep you thinking about whatever it is you're talking about and I think that, that um, that's why they're important and that's why we need stories to keep going throughout, you know, as long as we're around, as long as, as our species is around. Amen to that. Imagine a future where you're not even allowed to tell stories because they've been redacted from history as fake news. Pretty Yeah, boring. that's not going to do it. I mean, that's that. The, the more you limit what everyone can say, I mean, eventually, you're, you know, what are you, what are, they'll be done to nothing. I mean, that's just, that's scary. That's, that's when there is no um, innovation. There is no, you know, I think it would just really, it would really end everything eventually. Exactly, exactly right. Um, good stuff. I appreciate it uh, for the call, James. Thanks for, thanks for chiming in here. Uh, anything else you got on this? Uh, this the art of storytelling, the written word, the spoken tradition? Any, anything else? No, I think that was it. Um, just a great topic, uh, especially with given, like I, like I said, with what I do and everything. Um, so, great show. Thank you for having me again. Always a pleasure. James here has a podcast called Salcedo Paranormal. He goes Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Go check it out. Good stuff. Uh, He's got a link in the description. Give him a follow. Thanks for the phone call, James. Appreciate it very much, man. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. You too. All right. We're still talking about this. We're considering, right? So again, Ann Rice passed away this past weekend, and it is tragic. Uh, We all have to pass it sometime, and her time has come. And I think the thing is with this is uh, it, it reminds me to not take for granted the people that uh, are out there trying to inspire to not take for granted uh, the again I, like I always say standing on the shoulders of giants that got us here and she's one of them and there are many more there are, it's not just her but there are many 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 more and I think part of that is um, you know again instead uh, of you know trying to find a way to um, limit people or to uh, you know uh, set people up for failure or tell them they can't do things I think that uh, you know we should turn it all on its head and, and be positive in the other sense and say, no, you can do these things. You can tell these stories. Like, it's up to you. It's up to us. And a lot of these mythologies aren't built out of nowhere. They come from a lot of hard work. They come from a lot of retelling these stories and a lot of uh, just getting together. Because if you think about it in its most basic sense, storytelling is about people. It's about getting people together and telling a good tale, right? It's like, it's like watching a movie. It's like going to a play. It's like any of the rest of that stuff. It's like hanging out with good friends. It's just, it's one of those things that um, is, um, I think it's essential. I think it's absolutely essential. And so that's what we're talking about tonight. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, do you think that uh, this, this storytelling folklore, uh, the, the oral tradition, the written word is valuable? And do you think that we can sustain this through a, an avalanche of media chaos? If you want to be part of the show tonight, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. You can click the Discord link at troubledminds.org. We'll put you on the show. Let's go to uh, Joseph in Iowa. What's up, my friend? Welcome to the show. How are you tonight? All right. <clears throat> right so go right I was ahead. thinking not only is it essential, but I think people should practice it. And, like, I, I think it... I think they're going to think of it more like humans as plants and like, uh, they're gonna like, let's say, yeah, it's just, it's like, cause you're not given like stuff doesn't come from nowhere. Like you're, you're, you're given the tools from what you learn and you write off of that, you know, like when I write lyrics and stuff, I have like a pat, I only explain them as patterns in my head that I'm, that I'm, that I'm using. And then I fill in the blanks and like, it doesn't come from nowhere. Like if I didn't read books my entire life, I wouldn't know words. I wouldn't know how to fill in those blanks. 
you know, yeah. so. Yeah, but like I always say, is, that standing on the shoulders different. of giants is sort of the inspiration for us to, to, to maybe fill in those blanks with some glue or some things we hadn't considered before. It is, a, you know, very much like a, we try to make troubled minds as a group. It's, it's about even considering things that you wouldn't believe yesterday. Not that you have to believe them, but just considering them is, is sort of a powerful thing. But yeah, uh, so what else? Have you ever read Anne Rice? Are you familiar with her stories at all? Uh, I, I had a lot of books given to me at one point to sell and I recognize it, but I haven't read any. Gotcha. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Is there anybody I mean, out there that kid, you, did, go, ahead, was, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. When I was a kid, I made a comic book. It was like Oinky, I called it. And it was a pig with a vigilante kind of looking mask over him. And he like used to fight crime and stuff. And I don't know. I think it's just the right situations can set you off into a creative like I felt that at that time you know I was creating something but if like if it just the right situation occurred I could have you know like like I said in past episodes we're all potential Caesars like we could all be potential Stephen Kings we're like base codes that can be programmed to be masters And storytelling is one of it. You know, you can turn a mix of a mix into like, let's say you start with like a base, like, like, I don't even know how to describe this with like chemicals and stuff, but I know there would be like, you can make like salt and then you got salt water. And then what do you make from that? I don't know. You can make all kinds of probably stuff. Yeah, and we're talking like about just creativity. Throwing, yeah, throwing elements together to create things, and that's that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Uh, do you have anybody that's inspired you to that level? Do you have a hero that's maybe a writer, an author, uh, maybe a musician, something like that? That is just a you just can't shake their influence, and you're just trying to trying to maybe uh, do them honor. Well, there's a couple them? people when I was locked up. There was a couple people when I was locked up in a juvenile, and one of them in specific was like born around a mid, mid, like a really, they had studios in their family and stuff. And like this dude could just completely just create anything out of nothing. He was just making songs and he was real good at it. And that's kind of like the inspiration that I had was that guy. Nice. Uh, does he put anything out? Any music, anything? Does that, nobody would know this guy? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. He's probably like a gang member now. Who knows? Because like the stuff he rapped about was like kind of like bad. So, I mean, I tried to look up him one time and it was like kind of weird and weird video he was in. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Fair enough. But, uh, but, but point being is that these, these stories are uh, the need for inspiration. I think, you know, imagine, imagine living a life without inspiration. I think that's part of, part of what we're getting at here is that it, it becomes no life at all. Does it? Yeah. Or selective. Uh, they select, you know, They, they would select it because they had proven results maybe to operate like, let's say, a specific imagination to run a specific thing, like a starship. Okay. All right. I'm with you. I'm with you. What else you got for us, my friend? That's about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't right. really know. All right. All good. All good. I appreciate it. Joseph here has a YouTube channel called Hydro Hose. Check it out. He does rap stuff and uh, short videos. Uh, check him out. Uh, link is in the description. Thank you for the phone call, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. All right. So tonight, we're, thank you for the phone calls, guys. Uh, good stuff. Thanks for kicking us off. What are your thoughts, though? Regarding, again, Anne Rice just passed away this past weekend. It's the bad news. The good news is, is that uh, hopefully she inspired a generation to go forward, to continue telling these stories, to continue expanding consciousness through storytelling, through, and we're going to get to some more stuff tonight as we go about the written word, about the spoken tradition, the oral tradition, and the rest of this. And is this as important as anything else? Because I think given, you know, if you, if you let the propagandists decide, the first thing they're going to do is just chop out 
uh, things like this. They're going to chop out uh, conversations like we have on a nightly basis here on Troubled Minds where we're just considering things. We're kind of uh, merging fact and fiction into that who knows what comes next. And and those sort of stories, those sort of um, like expand your brain mental yoga as we call it here is is uh to me it's essential if i wasn't allowed to dream my own dreams as we've said tonight a couple times uh thanks matt in the chat there for that is that um well then what can you do what is life without inspiration and uh that's what we're talking about tonight we're talking about the unfortunate news that uh ann rice has passed away and uh also talking about her influence uh regarding her vampire lestat uh the mythology of vampires shows like buffy True Blood, uh, Underworld, and uh, Blade, and basically everything modern, uh, Midnight Mass on Netflix, pretty every modern vampire story, uh, pretty much every single one ha- have been influenced by her, probably more than some of the old stuff, some of the old, old, old uh, tales, right, that maybe wasn't so sort of transcending in their, uh, the scope, right, the scope of the, uh, the mythology. So pretty amazing stuff. And so love to hear your thoughts on this. I don't think you have had to, had to have read Anne Rice to appreciate what I'm saying here. Everybody out there has an inspiration. And that's what we're getting at tonight. The heart of this is inspiration. And I think by, in terms of maybe the technocrats or whoever might want to try and chop out some of this stuff, you know, you see them removing, you know, uh, like uh, Mark Twain from from school libraries and things like this, right? Like this, this is exactly part of the problem. Is that uh, if we start sort of um, subverting inspiration? then uh, undermining inspiration, then we have a problem, don't we? We have a really large problem, and I think that's what's going on. Yeah, yeah, we got a... Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pull out the uh, the moderation tool in a minute here and ban all these clowns that keep dropping links. But, but uh, okay, so point being is this, right? The question is tonight. Uh, you haven't... Uh, Anne Rice passed away is, is the bad news. The good news is, again, like I always say, you know, God willing, we have tomorrow. And what are we going to do from today to tomorrow? Are we going to continue the tradition of telling stories, of ins- trying to inspire others? Even if you don't, remember, think about it this way. The, thing, the odd thing about inspiration is it can be such a small, light touch on somebody's shoulder, right? It could be just, just a whisper. And, you know, even if you reach 10,000 people but only inspire one, you've inspired one, you know, and that's an inspiration is a very, very, very powerful thing. And that's what we're talking about tonight. Do you think this inspiration from Anne Rice and from the rest of this stuff, from all the storytelling, the written and oral tradition, do you think that this is as important as anything else? Do you think adults, uh, us people with troubled minds and other minds, all minds, actually, do you think that, uh, we have the right to dream our own dreams? to consider not just the inspiration, but also maybe carry that on. And what kind of, uh, of effect does that have? Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not going to change my mind on this one. And uh, I'm just going to say I think it's incredibly important. And uh, love to hear your thoughts on this. Do you have any inspiration out there that has uh, really driven you to do uh, whatever? What, you, you know, it could, be, it could be any projects you have. Uh, just, uh, just, just getting yourself in the right frame of mind to take on the daily, the daily grind. Whatever it happens to be looking to hear your thoughts tonight on this like i said i know probably a lot of people uh, haven't read ann rice because it, she was you know from 1976 i'm generation x and she was uh, you know that stuff was out when i was a young man and uh it was unmatched i thought it was ab- absolutely incredible uh, it was it was erotic it was um, it was legendary it was mythology it was it was just inspiration it was sort of unbridled inspiration and i thought it was pretty amazing so what are your thoughts on this tonight not ne- not necessarily just Anne rice but what about inspiration what if we're robbed of it and do you think it's as important as anything else if you want to be part of the show tonight love to hear your thoughts 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 this is troubled minds i'm michael strange don't go anywhere more Anne rice inspiration and you when we return Yeah. 
they're transferring to your brain. Random, random, random images that they traverse neurons in the brain. Yeah, all right, so maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, and they also feel them planting or receiving memories or ideas or images. Radio. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and hello to all of you who may also have troubled minds. Tonight, we're talking about all the things we're not allowed to talk about. Per usual, you know what they are. Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, the 24-hour news cycle, propaganda, and the general feeling that we live in the upside down. We are streaming on Rockfin, DLive, YouTube, and Twitter, and we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM, and we're taking your phone calls as we talk about the passing of Anne Rice. We're considering the oral tradition, the written word, and inspiration. Do you think if you take these things away, humanity would be less for it? And that's what's on my mind tonight. With all the censorship we've talked about, with all the big tech removing things, with the cancel culture taking books out of out of schools because they don't want people to know what the past was like, all kinds of things here. We're talking about inspiration. And it doesn't have to be ugly stuff. It could be ugly stuff. But how do you learn not to be ugly? By witnessing, by considering ugly stuff, right? It doesn't come from nowhere. It comes from learning. It comes from educating. It comes from telling these stories to each other about horrific things or about magnificent things or a mixture of the two and blend it all together somewhere in between. And that's what we're considering tonight. Without Anne Rice, where would we be? Without her mythology of vampires that inspired a whole new generation of shows, including Twilight, Buffy, we're talking Underworld, we're talking True Blood, all kinds of things. And well, the question is, where would we be? Where would humanity be tonight, uh, Tonight, not just tonight, but today, with, without Anne Rice, without people like her, without storytellers? And I'd uh, love to hear your thoughts. If you want to be part of the show, 702-957-1037. Let's go to our good buddy, Robert in Pennsylvania. What's up, Robert? Welcome to the show. How are you, my friend? Oh, I'm fine. Um, you know, one of my favorite authors, uh, I read her back in the 80s, um, was Colleen McCulloch. All right. She wrote uh, The Thornbirds. All right. Um, and what was so wonderful about the way she wrote was that as you're reading, going from sentence to sentence, paragraph to paragraph, it's like the written word with music. You know, the written word prose that combined music and poetry. It was, it, she was a beautiful writer and very underappreciated, I think. Um, so if anybody is listening here that is interested in really some... I wish I could have... I wish I had that talent, right, to, to pick up uh, Colin McCulloch's uh, Thornbirds. And, and see what I'm talking about. Now, as I said in the chat, uh, I've, I've never read any of, of uh, Anne Rice's novels, uh, and probably because I was a snot, <laughs> all right, who, who just didn't appreciate um, vampire fiction, all right? I, you know, I was pressed against it, maybe probably because I, I just didn't know enough about it or, her, or the quality of her writing, 
uh, I didn't give her a chance, and I'm sorry for that. I really, really am. After listening to you, all right. So my daughter is going to make sure she gives me her Anne Rice books to read, and I'm going to read them. You won't regret um, it. You will enjoy it. Yes. Um, I, I'm more the kind of person who likes to read what's called literary novels, all right. Um, and and that doesn't mean that that supernatural topics are, can't be liter- uh, literary novels, okay? Like um, uh, Bram, uh, Bram Stoker's original Dracula was a literary; is considered a literary novel. It's a classic, right? Um, but look at yourself, Mike. Listen to all the stories you picked up since you've been doing this 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 thing that you do, right? Have you ever given a thought to taking some of those stories that you've, you know, discussed, brought to your attention, and trying to, to write some kind of fiction around any of it? Of course. Uh, like I said, I've got one in the works. It's been in the works for 10 years. <laughs> Maybe in another 10, I'll get it done. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, for real, for real. Uh, but uh, it, well, I'll clearly... promise you this. I'm, okay. I'm one of the best editors in the world. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not shy about it. All right. I've edited three, uh, three novels for people. Um, I'm just saying, if you get it done. You just the thing about writing, Michael, is that you don't worry about each word as you're going along or the how this how the punctuation is going. Your first draft is just writing it. Just have fun with it. All right. Just write it. Get to the end. Write one if you write one page a day, all right. At the end of the end of three hundred sixty five days, you've got a novel, all right. What people make a mistake doing is they sweat each page out, each paragraph out in their first draft, and, and, and they seem like they never can get done. That's the key. Don't worry about that. Just just write. You know what you want to write. Write it. It'll come to you. Don't worry about how awful it is as far as punctuation or grammar or whatever. Just do it. And then you go to the hard work of editing that thing. I'd like to talk about how publishing is so different today than it was back when Ann Rice's novel was first picked up. Back in those days, she had a chance, a good chance, right? Because the publishing industry, there was there was you know, like 40 different, maybe even more, different publishers during that time. And, and if they took a book, all right, they, they, their publicity department took care of it, all right? They, they, they're the ones who put it up, put the publicity out, and made a novel that was any good at all into something that people wanted to read. That's not what the situation is today. There are six publishers Really, six publishers. It's like everything else is consolidated. There are six publishers in the world today. All right? And, I mean, there are some independent publishers, but I'm talking about the big ones. All right? And you can't break into them. It's it's impossible to break in, in with them. And even if you do, all the work's on your shoulders. You have to do all the promotion. You have to pay the cost of everything that's involved in that promotion. Uh, you just can't. You just can't sit back and go and write your next novel. Right? It's disgusting. Uh, the, the writers are getting ripped off, especially on on Amazon. All right, Amazon uh, prices their you know novels so cheaply. All right, that the writers can't make a living anymore. All right, the only, if you want to make a living as a writer, or at least make a a, a substantial second income. You should always write short stories, all right? There's, uh, frankly, there's not a lot of that out there either available for short stories. There used to be all kinds of magazines like McCall's and, and Red Book uh, 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 that, you could, that you could write a story and sell a story to. But those magazines are long gone. Uh, you know, and there used to be so many of them, all right? But you write, if, if, if somebody's out there wants to become a writer, that's, if I can give them one recommendation, take and write your short stories and enter them into contests, all right, and win them. 
win. Now, some of these contests can, <laughs> can pay as much as $3,000 if you win. But th- that's the key. You, you know, that's how you break in. That's how you have to break in these days. Um, and if you have so many of your books as Kindles, um, you know you don't own those books. At any time, Amazon can shut those books down, even though you bought them. Right? What you were saying earlier about um, real books that you turn pages with, nobody can take them from you. But Amazon can take your Kindles. All right, so keep that in mind. And as far as Stephen King goes, uh, what he what he latched on to was quite a formula. He has a formula. If you notice, you, almost every book he, uh, he wrote is along that same formula. But he wrote one of the best books on how to be a good writer. It's called On Writing. That was ever published. You know, a, any writer that 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 really has any knowledge at all has that in their library. Um, That's one I'll have to get. No. <laughs> That's one I'll have Seriously, to get. Seriously, it's it's not that it's not a huge volume, but it is. It makes it so easy. It's he makes it so easy, and it's so logical. He he really really knows his. You can tell from the book he knows his stuff. Now, I, 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 there are books of his that I really liked. I liked Salem's Lot. I liked um, uh, the one about the assassin. Uh, I'm getting too old. I have to lose my memory. Um, anyway, there's two books he liked. But then he, his formula was take something mundane. All right? Let's say a dog that barks and turn him into Cujo. Right? Take a, a harmless thing like a car and turn it into a monster. Go into an elevator. You know, a mundane thing that everybody does every day. Right? And turn it into something. That, he would take the, the those types of things and generate a, a you know a, something horrific out of them. Right? Matter of fact, he said he scares himself <laughs> when he writes. That's right? the way to do he it. He really does. And, he said, and matter of fact, he says if it doesn't scare the writer, it's not going to scare the reader. That that's, makes sense. That's very good advice. Agreed. So, Agreed. Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I know this wasn't supposed to be a topic on writing. That's okay. Right? It's this okay. Supposed to be Bally and Rice. No, right? no, it's a, it's about but inspiration. Some, You're good. It's about inspiration. You're yeah. totally good. Yeah, but the thing that she did is better than what Stephen King did. All right, her books will last forever. New generations will find them, but frankly, as much as <laughs> most of Stephen King's books will be forgotten, you know, in the next fifty years, except for a few of them. A few of them, The Stand, uh, Salem's Lot, uh, will probably survive and be found by new generations. But she left a whole library of stuff, and you know, when she wrote the erotic stuff. Uh, that was probably just to to be able to afford to to pay the rent. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. But you can't have you can't have interview with a vampire. You can't have a, a book about vampires, a novel about vampires, without putting a lot of eroticism in there because vampires from the days of Dracula are basically an erotic, uh, even romantic. Um, subject in a novel yeah and she and she spun that magic into it and and i think like you're like you're describing here that one of the amazing things is just like i've been saying is that not only like as you just described she wrote her own mythology but then she inspired all these others and that's the thing right so all that new stuff the twilight and all the other stuff that came out you know buffy and all the rest of that that's that's due in large part to her and her her novels back in the late 70s early 80s such good stuff, man. Yeah, but uh, Twilight, I believe Twi- Twilight started on a uh, platform for writers. Uh, you, wrote, you wrote, you wrote, so what the heck was the name of that? Um, she was discovered uh, by a big publisher because she, she got tons and tons and tons of readers uh, on this particular site that she was, that the woman that wrote Twilight was on 
And that's what made her. <laughs> Unless I got her confused with somebody else. Uh, you know, everything's clicks. Everything's clicks. Everything's clicks. Yep, click Everything's bait. clicks. And, and, uh, and, go ahead, and, go ahead. And, and, and when you have to, the worst thing, a writer, the worst horror a writer has to go through these days is having to push his, you know, his own book, all right, on Facebook or Twitch, I mean, uh, those other social media sites, having to push them. You're pushing your friends. Yeah, pretty much, right? Friends away. Yeah. It, it was so disheartening to me when, you know, when I started having to do that, that I quit quickly, all right? Because, you know, every, you know once, a, once in a while, once every... You know, maybe twice a year I might throw something out there, all right? But I've won, I've won short story contests, and some of those stories are in the book that I, that, that, that I sent you. Um, but like I said, I wish, I deeply wish that I could write uh, uh, like that Colin McCulloch. I mean, I don't know if Anne Rice writes like her, but from what you described, I'm intrigued. So I'm going to read her book, her books. But the idea of being able to put words on paper that are not just descriptions, but music combined with poetry, you know, and it all flows just like a, just like a, 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 a stanza uh, on a, on a, on a, you know, the notes on a, on a, a, a musical notes on a graph, you know, that's right. what, that's what's good writing. And my my excuse me, my daughter writes like that, and she does nothing with it. Anyway, uh, well, get it out there. That's what I call it. About. Get it out there. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. amazing stuff. Uh, you would know, right? Again, uh, Robert here is an author. He's got a book called uh, Stories from a Fractured Mind. I know he hates when I plug his book because that's not why he calls, but he sent me a copy, and it's magnificent. Links in the description. Give this man some love. Uh, very talented as well. Check it out. He's got a lot of really great stories. Robert, you were the best. Thank you for uh, for chiming in. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not done here. Okay, go ahead. I'm not done here. I'm not going to cut you off then. Go right I'm ahead, not, sir. I'm, I'm, go right ahead. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus right on you. <laughs> okay. All right. Go right ahead, sir. Ten years, ten years to write a first draft? Come on, son. <laughs> hey, I'm busy. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm busy. I'm busy. You're, you're absolutely correct, you, though. You're correct. But I'm busy, bro. Tell me that you don't have one hour a day. Oof. Right. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Maybe. Maybe. Tell me. You Maybe. don't have one. You take the weekends off, don't you? No, <laughs> no. I wish I did. No, I'm I'm, I'm doing other things. I, I have another job, man. I'm not. This isn't. Uh, this isn't full time. So no, I, I have other things I do. So no. Well, you you need well, all you have to do is manage your time. Right? You're correct. You're what correct. you do is you sit down and say all this every day. I know I have an hour somewhere. If you don't have an hour, you have a half an hour. Right. All right. And I'm going to keep plugging away at what I'm writing, and I'm not going to worry about how awful it is or how awful I think it is. I'm just going to write the goddamn thing, all right, until it's the end, and then I'm going to to email that that whole first draft to Robert Aaron for him to look at. <laughs> okay. Or right, you got it. Challenge accepted, my friend. Challenge accepted. I will, uh, I will start. Okay. I got the outline. I got some written and everything. It's, uh, I'll give you a little teaser. How about that? It starts on a highway 97, okay. highway 97. You up have in my Mount email Chester. address. I do. You have my email address. Just email what you got. All right. I like to look at it. All right. Highway okay. 97. It I'll, starts I'll, in the I'll dark. I'll the rest of the show. All right. All right. I'll, I'll give everybody else a teaser. Thanks. Thanks, Robert. You're the best. I appreciate the call. Uh, good stuff. Thanks. Thanks for, uh, for uh, kicking me along. Damn it, Mike. Work harder. I love it. That's what this is about. Here you go. Here's your teaser. You want your teaser? It starts on high, Highway 97 up near Mount Shasta. It's dark out. And, of course, we've talked about Mount Shasta as being a, uh, a portal, right? A, an entry into Agartha. And uh, people in the town have been seen walking around wearing white robes. So guess where this starts? In the dark, Highway 97. Not a car around. A truck driver barreling north towards Oregon. And what happens? They look out the window. They turn back. And right there in the highway, as they're barreling down, going 70 miles an hour, standing in front of them is a figure 
in a white robe. And the truck driver, of course, slams on the brakes, tries to turn left, turn right, ends up luckily alive in a ditch and a dream of a figure in white. And there you go. There's how that begins. It's already, that, that first bit's already written down. But uh, anyway, point being is that uh, the, the storytelling is one of those things. It's, um, right, it's, uh, it is, it's deeply personal. It should be inspirational. It should be, uh, again, like I always say, we're, standing, we're, we're just standing on the shoulders of giants here. We're just taking uh, the, the things that we know and expanding on them and the things that have been taught to us and hopefully uh, pressing humanity forward and, again, uh, trying to inspire each other. Uh, so thanks for, thanks for uh, being patient there. Derek, we'll get to you at the bottom of the hour. Appreciate that very much. And uh, yeah, like we're talking about Anne Rice tonight. All right. We're talking about not just her books. We'll get to uh, Magnus and uh, the Vampire Lestat in just a minute here and we, after we talk to Night Stalker. Uh, plus, we have a whole third hour, so we got time to get to that. It's no sweat. But there's, there's a lot of really amazing things that she wrote that are uh, allegory uh, for life, that are metaphors for life. And of course, any good writer will do that. And um, well, we'll get to some of that. We'll get to some of that. Okay. So, so as, it, as this, as this kind of winds down uh, here, bottom of the hour, that's what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about Anne Rice has passed away at 80, right? And uh, not just, uh, it is a sad thing, but I think that, uh, you know, sort of those ideas of, of life and the celebration of a life uh, are positive in that, uh, you know, we can honor our elders. We can honor the folks who've inspired us. And we don't have to make everything political. We don't have to make everything uh, just so just so ridiculous that, uh, you know, and call her a boomer and all this other stuff, you know? I mean, nobody's doing doing that right now but point being if you malign entire generations it's uh you're wasting everybody's time and you're and you're ruining your own life by the way that's my opinion i'm sticking to that one uh anyway so that's what we're talking about tonight inspiration we're talking about uh transcending uh generations we're talking about inspiring the next and the next and the next and that's what this is all about tonight so as Anne rice passes away i'm asking is inspiration storytelling the written word the spoken word is it as important as anything else? And of course, uh, with Facebook and all the Twitter and text censorship and like Robert described there on the phone call, uh, well, they're changing history right before our very eyes. Uh, they can redact a story from Kindle. They can edit it on the fly, just like Wikipedia is not the same yesterday as it is today. They're changing history. But in the old fashioned written book that's on your bookshelf, they can never take that away from you. And there's something beautiful to be said about that. And that's what we're talking about tonight. Inspiration, Anne Rice, the generational divide and connectedness. And can we do the same? Love to have you as part of the show. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. Don't go anywhere. We got Derek the Night Stalker when we come back. Be right back. More Anne Rice inspiration, Troubled Minds, and you when we return. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and we are streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter, and we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. Tonight, we're talking about Anne Rice. We're talking about inspiration. We're talking about the written word. We're talking about the oral tradition. We're talking about let us dream our own dreams. We don't need technocrats telling us what to think or what to do or what to redact or whatever else. We're grown people. We'll decide what we want to consume. What do you think about Anne Rice, her stories, vampires, the inspiration of the written and spoken word, and how important is this to us, current and future? Love to hear your thoughts at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Let's go to our good friend, Derek, in Massachusetts, the Night Stalker. Derek, welcome to the show. How are you, my friend? Hello, hello. We got a little bit of a delay on the Discord, so there you go. What's going on? You hear me? Loud and clear. Welcome to the show, sir. How are you? Right. Sorry, brother. Boom, great show. Great show tonight. Thank cool you, stuff. thank you. 
RIP to Anne Rice. Of course, it's really sad. I, I have not read her books, unfortunately. Uh, I just wasn't really a, a big reader as a kid. I'm just one of those 90s babies who were just uh, popped in front of a TV when I was a little kid and just raised by stories via TV and movies, mm-hmm. which I still think is like very valuable. I mean, the, the stories that um, writers are telling via like the visual medium, too, you know. Um, but yeah, really, really cool stuff in it. Great calls, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, a few thoughts on this. So you, you were talking about the uh, the other day about the um, storyteller show idea. I was like, oh, that's that's really cool, and it got me thinking about just like the role of story, the storyteller in history and everything, and about how like how telling stories and like creating narratives seems to be like primary with like consciousness, with the human consciousness in general. It seems to be like what humans do. It's almost like what separates us from other animals is our ability to like create these narratives and create these stories and that kind of stuff. You know I mean? And then like I was thinking about how that took form in like the early days in, in history and stuff and like the role of the bard in history and how like the bard would go from like town to town and like sing songs and tell stories and that kind of stuff and give on one level, give people who were like toiling away, like in the farm or stuck in shelves at a supermarket or whatever um, it takes them away and brings them to, to like a world that they're not experiencing, which is like has uh, infinite value, obviously. But also, like the bards were paid by people a lot of times. They were like patrons. They had patrons who would tell them to weave tales about their heroics and about their like weave mythologies about them, like the elites, like primarily and stuff. Because I I think we're gonna get into a little maybe juice territory here, but like. Um, because of the importance of storytelling and how like us as observers of reality, us as like co-creators of reality, the importance of like, ha- like what stories do to actual reality, you know? And then like, I don't know, like the, like the way we, like the, the double slit experiment and everything, how reality, how we're rendering reality, how the observer, our consciousness is what's rendering reality. So it's like, we're taking like it's it's storytelling is just a form of art and art is something that like we're all doing constantly art is i believe like i talk about the dark side of the moon um album cover all the time with like the light going through the prism and then creating the reality we're that prism like we're source is beaming through us and then how we interpret that how we filter that source for everyone else or for ourselves like that creation of reality is art and that takes many shapes and that's like takes many forms depending on who you are, what environment you're living in, what you, what the, like what that environment does to your filter, like what you know, so I don't I don't know. And so then like you get into the creation of art and the actual like act of storytelling and the act of writing and people talk constantly about like getting in the zone and how like these these works of art and these like these things seem to come through them seems to like a lot of the best, best pieces of art songs, everything the, the artist usually says like they were, they were there, but like they weren't, there was something coming through them. Uh, not like they were being possessed, but just like the muses or whatever. So that source was like beaming through them. So the, the act of doing art, like because storytelling and like the way we've, we, we perceive the world creates reality. It's almost like the act of doing art, makes that connection it's like a mechanism of reality that like it opens that door the conduit to the source to like the the all or whatever and then i don't know it beams beams through the filter and then that's like the shamanic experience going seeing like the trying to describe the un, the, un, the undescribable to people like the creation of art storytelling you know what like changing people's paradigms in order to move culture forward in order to move shape minds move move minds forward you know I'm rambling, but save me here. Sorry. <laughs> You're good. No, uh, a fantastic point with the bards too. I actually hadn't considered the bards for this, uh, this show tonight, but which is again, why again, a collaboration is always the best. Right. right. Uh, but I think bards in particular, um, uh, funny, funny, uh, dungeons and dragons, Matt here says, uh, in the chat says, uh, bards plus one to all your stats, right. When they're, when they're <laughs> it's, it's true though. When they're like in, in the game that there's a particular spell they cast or, or, you know, when they're, when they're doing their musical spell casting, 
it's a, it's yeah. sort of an uplifting thing to everybody, and that's and that's a right. And so we're we're talking about yeah. literal inspiration in the form of uh, really uplifting people's performance in all things, and uh, it, it's pretty amazing. Good good point there with the bard. But uh, is that yeah. enough? Did I save you? <laughs> Go right ahead, sir. No, you did. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, they're just like when I'm when I'm listening to the show, it's like everyone could kind of contribute such great ideas, and it gets my mind flowing and trying to like siphon that into into one call. It's always it's it's tough, you know. So, um, but yeah, Chris, uh, as far as like the future of storytelling you were talking about earlier, like it gets me thinking. Like on one level, this is like real maybe juice, but the idea of like AI storytelling and how there keeps every every once in a while, every few months, there's different stories about. AI creating art, pieces of art, doing writing, even Stargate. Um, there, like we talked about that before, that that the um, there's like some AI that's writing an episode or just wrote an episode of Stargate, and then the whole cast like had like a table read and they and they read it out, like which is which is weird. And so it's like if in the, I think there's like something to that. I think it's obviously very primitive and very weird and there's a weird Uncanny Valley like dystopia type type like flavor to it right now. But the idea of if the function of reality is to perceive infinite realities, is to perceive the totality of consciousness, then it would need like um, an evolution of like the, the filter, you know? So now we're processing information. Like that's, that's the whole thing about how we collect like the collaboration idea again, how we're collaborating stories. It's moving, it's creating more and more novelty. And then, so now you're going to interpret machines, bring put machines in there that now can like digest an unfathomable amount of, of of content of information that can like digest the entire internet and come up with stories narratives based from that which like might be garbage but might have like really wild things in it that then someone reads and that completely shifts their consciousness and then come up with some other story that changes history you know and then like look at what the, like the matrix is coming out next week or whatever and look at what the matrix did for like changing the idea of like the simulation theory or like what is reality for like the collective culture for the zeitgeist, you know, it changed so much. And now this reboot's coming out the same time as we're actually entering this metaverse in reality where you're like, I don't know, that's a like, like imitating art and just how, I don't know how these ideas can birth reality can shape reality, you know? And then in the future, separate from AI creating stories, but like the importance of us, of us creating stories when we go into some type of virtual world or metaverse, we're, creativity becomes like the number one currency the most important thing is going to be stories like to take to take the the person plugged in or whatever in this world to the most fantastical places to stretch their mind as far as possible to bring to bring them to worlds they couldn't think of themselves you know that's going to become i think storytelling might become even more important than it ever could be you know um right now obviously we seem to be in some kind of like a log jam where like the mainstream narratives are really trying to like they're controlling the stories. They're controlling the narratives that are trying to shape the world that we're living in. But art finds a way. Like, and that's that's breeding things like this. We have like troubled minds and stuff, where it brings us to these alternative forms of media where we're collaborating and then we're creating stories and, and that kind of stuff. And that breeds whole new ideas. And then I don't know. I don't know. It's cool to see like art. I don't know. It's, it's very important. Like, I think it's like it's it's maybe the point and maybe the point of living is like creating these stories and sharing these stories and co-creating reality together. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. A few thoughts there is that, uh, number one, uh, with, uh, with this new world of, you know, universal basic income. And I think, I think if you're, you know, it's not coming, it's not on the horizon, but I think if you're doing it right, kind of in that star Trek post, uh, scarcity world, that's what people will do. Like, like most of the time will be spent, uh, you know, in creative endeavors and whether that's going to be music or whether that's going to be something like this, or whether, like you said, inspiring each other to tell different and better and greater stories to kind of expand the consciousness. And then as, as the second thing here, uh, what was it? Uh, see, I lost my train of thought now. Uh, what was another? You had a re- oh oh. Uh, yeah. Speaking of uh, speaking of um, uh, you know how these stories are kind of uh, even movies and the rest of this stuff, uh, they're being filtered. Like Robert was describing, you know, all, all the book publishers back in the day, uh, and now there's only five of them, right? Six of them, something yeah, like yeah. that. It's the same thing with uh, with Hollywood and the rest of the some some of the garbage that keeps getting spit out, and they have to check with China to make. 
make sure it's okay, right? They have to check with the CIA to make sure it's okay. Like, there's a whole lot of this that's even in like the movies that are out that are good that are like you know that are inspiring now. There's still uh, sort of that censorship about them, and so e- even in those terms, we're still not allowed. And I think I think there's some beauty in just sort of that free form being allowed to let it come and let these conversations yeah. kind of unfold together. It, it's an amazing thing. It's part of, part, it, it is inspiration. And uh, that's, that's what exactly. this is all about. It's good stuff. Yeah. My man. And, and like it, it, it like, sorry, is there, is there a call behind me? Nope. You're good. Go right ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. And so, and I think like that's, that's absolutely true. And I, but then I think like art is always present. It always will, will like it comes from that. So the more, pressure is put on us from like the mainstream like the more tightly they try to like to, to tighten tighten the screws on us or whatever and then art starts to trickle out and other like water can't be like it can't be dammed in like that it starts to come off the cracks and stuff so because the mainstream media isn't giving us these stories that we want it's it's not they're not resonating with us because they're not truthful or they're limited or they're just i don't know they're not they're not scratching that itch for us because they're not authentic then we're finding other these other streams of media and then like stumbling on to things that if let's say it was like the nineties or whatever, so let's say like we're, we were getting a little bit more stimulating stuff from the mainstream then maybe we, we wouldn't have the desire to, to expand and reach out and try to find like different shows, like all the, all, all like the different YouTube channels and, and James's show and your show and everything, like try to find these outlets to just to scratch that itch and then, and then exposing us to even more ideas, you know? So like, it's almost like because they put the, the hammer down on us, then we're able to, are, are, like good things bloom from from that you know it's almost like the best forms of art come from when when society is most like harshly um infringed upon you know um which is interesting um i'm kind of rambling losing my train of thought there's something else i want there's something else i want to say but uh damn uh, yeah like the mythology idea the, the, the creating mythology and i was thinking about this yesterday i was talking to rivers and she, she was talking about how like the different deities and everything I was thinking I was getting into the, like, the, 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 how we're just like filters for, for the source or whatever. So let's say you're looking at it like a type of simulation idea or we're, we're like the renderers of reality. And then these like mythical figures are like birth. So it's like, so source is beaming through us and then through different paradigms in different cultures all across the world, all across history, these stories that are very similar have different archetypes, have very similar archetypes because they're interpreting some type of like source knowledge, some type of like whatever that is that inspiration, that muse that's coming through, trying like giving these ideas to, to change culture or whatever. Um, so people throw so certain symbols pop up throughout different mythologies and everything as if like, I don't know, just different prisms filtering whatever this truth is in different ways. But then because of the way we create reality, those different mythical figures, those different interpretations that might not be literal things, just ideas that are like anthropomorphized become are like actually birthed somewhere in the ether and actually become deities and become things that actually exist. And then they feed on our attention and our energy. So they need the devotion. They need us to worship them. Like throughout history with the Greek gods and Roman, like they, they're constantly after our attention. Like that's so that's the importance of the bards telling these stories these mythologies about the elites, about these rules, because they know the importance of mythologies, of stories, and how they make you immortal. They're tying back to the immortality show and how they can keep you alive in like another sense, and maybe even give birth to like something else, like in a metaphysical sense that can we will that will live forever. Um, it, like I don't know. And then once people like you only that the idea that when you only really truly die when the world forgets about like forgets about you completely. You know, like when the last person remembers you. you know? Coco. I'm really, really rambling. I'm no, sorry, you're good. The, you, I'm you, go. seen, you seen that, that, uh, that Pixar show, Coco? I actually haven't. No, no, no. I haven't. That, that's a theme. Of, that's, a, movies. That's, a, that's a theme of the, the whole movie is that uh, it's like the Dia de los Muertos and they're honoring the dead. And when the last person remembers the spirit, it, like their, their family dies off and there's only one person who remembers them. When that person passes, that spirit is no longer remembered and also passes on. Good stuff, yeah, man. Exactly. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah so, this, just, just to kind of summarize, my, my idea in stories is just like there's so when we when we tell when a person tells stories, or whatever, or there's something, there's a source that's beaming through us. That's like we're the filter rendering reality, 
And then the story storytelling is important because it's what it's what creates the reality. So so it's like I don't know. It's it's it, you can't understate how important storytelling is to like humanity or like consciousness in general to like shaping reality. So it's a really cool show idea. Really awesome stuff, Mike. Great calls, everybody. I want to go. But and and you as well, sir. Hey, thank you for the call, Derek in Massachusetts. Always the best. We'll talk to you soon. Later. Have a great night. Later. He's got a YouTube channel. Check him out. Uh, it's only a trailer, but let's uh, gr- great stuff from Derek always on this show and many other shows. He's been on James's show, uh, Salcedo Paranormal. He's been on Clyde Lewis. He's been he's been on uh, Ryan Gable. He's been on the Joe Rube show. He's been on every damn show uh, because he's he's a brilliant dude and he's out there just kind of getting it out. Uh, but let's inspire him to get to his own YouTube channel. So give him a follow. Link in the description it says follow Night Stalker here. Uh, please follow him on YouTube and let him know we want to hear more. All right, so we're talking about inspiration tonight. We're talking about Anne Rice. We're talking about storytelling we're talking about how important it is to humans to to the adult mind to the zeitgeist to what comes next and uh ann rice was a huge inspiration to me so when i heard the news on saturday night that she had passed away i I thought there's no way there's absolutely no way i could do this uh and just kind of forget that this happened and forget that uh, you know ann rice was such a huge inspiration to just me not just me but so many others including other again underworld buffy the vampire slayer twilight you name it on and on and on and on uh, true blood they're they're all there with uh with, with uh, basically the Anne Rice vampire mythology. She's uh, our generation's Bram Stoker, and uh, amazing stuff. If you haven't read some Anne Rice, the time, well, uh, hopefully you have the time. You can make the time, and um, do get it. Uh, my favorite is The Vampire Lestat is the name of that. It's her second book after Interview with the Vampire, and it is hot. It's one of those ones. We'll get to that story in just a little bit. I'll give you a brief overview without too many spoilers, because uh, I've got an analogy to make on Magnus Lestat, and life. Uh, before we do that, let's go to our good buddy. Uh, if you want to be part of the show, actually, we're still taking your phone calls. If you want to be part of the show, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Let's go to Joe in Florida. What's up, my man? Welcome to the show. How are you tonight? Not too bad. How's everybody doing? Uh, doing well. Go right ahead, sir. What's on your mind? Um, well, good topic. Um, read, I think I read one book. I don't think I know I did, but it was in the 90s, so it's been long forgotten. Um, excellent author. You know, I know I've read more Stephen King, King. Things that come to mind, at least for me, and I don't know how many of the listeners might agree with this, but for some reason I can watch a lot of TV and not really remember it or not dream about it, I should say. But um, I know when I read a book, a paper book, more times than not, I might go to bed and dream about the book. It's like a book or the words um, make more of an impression on your subconscious, probably. So, you know, there's something to be said about imagination and putting things in stories and having the artistic um, I guess the artistic leeway to do it the way you want it. Because a lot of times when you see translations onto movies and things are changed, things are different, people always have complaints. So books don't always translate well uh, onto screen. And those of us that read the books, uh, I think, are have more to see, I guess, is it. To explain, I guess if you read, you know, if you see a movie in two hours, you might be missing some details in a book might have. I think everybody agrees with that. Um, it's kind of funny you're talking about this because I get synchronicities all the time. A lot of times they seem to tie in with the show. This weekend, um, we had a Toys for Tots drive at my funeral home of all places. And uh, anyway, we had an ice cream purse. We came up for a promo. The guy sells ice cream. <laughs> what the hell? So I think I, I posted a picture. No, I'll, I'll post pictures. I'll post pictures during the week. Dead serious. I am dead serious. So I'll put some pictures on Discord later in the week. But this guy comes up with a 67 Cadillac hearse. So anyway, the guy's got parked there. And this girl uh, and her boyfriend is what I assumed um, come walking up. And they looked out of place. You know, they weren't dropping off toys. They were younger people. And 
the girl wants to talk to somebody. She comes running up to me and she goes, your boss said I should talk to you about books and stuff. And I'm like, huh? So she wrote a book and I'm looking at it right now on Amazon. And like Robert was saying, because I've had ideas to write books, but she wrote a book called Death to the Soul. It's paperback. It came out in 2020. I do intend on buying it. Um, she she was asking me questions about embalming and things and how I liked the ideas. And I said, well, I, you know, I gave her my opinion of her immediate thoughts, but I haven't read the book yet. But I thought it was pretty neat that somebody had come up here and in this day and age, with all the tools that we have, we should all be writing our own story. I think everybody here who listens has their own story. I know I'd like to make a comedy story about my job. Now, whether I translate that to paper or put it on screen, I would like to at least write one screenplay. I need to do that. Um, you know, leaving things to, like Derek was saying, but, you know, I watched Stargate. I didn't hear the table read. Right? You start to wonder um, if we're in a matrix, what's writing the story? Right. Is it where's, us? Is it our soul trapped? Where's it coming from? I don't from? think a machine. Yeah, where's it coming from? You know, um, you know, let's. It's kind of it. You know, where where's all of it coming from, and and what are we doing here? So, but uh, I had some other thoughts. I didn't write them down. Like I said, I've been, you know, running around. Um, I mean, I am glad that certain things translate to screen, like Star Wars. That's been a lot of ideas. Joseph Campbell, all kinds of ideas are good to transfer the screen. Um, one of my personal favorites authors is um, Annie's Neil Diamond. Uh, he's well known for taking ancient gods and making them uh, exist in real life. So the Sandman, American Gods, a TV show. Another author that I like is Terry Pratchett. He's passed away, but he has a series of books that take place in a land called Discworld. And it's literally a flat earth that rides in the back of the turtle. And it's kind of maybe slightly steampunkish, kind of D&D. He takes everything, but he makes fun of modern times. So you can read a fantasy. It's still poking fun at, uh, you know, all modern uh, mistakes. Hey, good stuff, you know, Joe. We gotta go. We gotta get off. Joe, Joe, Joe. We gotta get off the radio. Yeah, you wanna hang tight? You wanna hang on, and we'll get right back to you. Yeah, I can hang on if you're really, I can hang on for a few Okay, hang tight. We'll get right back to you. All right, this is Troubled Minds, guys. We're talking about Anne Rice tonight. Thanks for being part of this. We'll be back tomorrow for more 7 p.m. Pacific. And uh, as we finish, you know the drill. Be sure, be strong, be true. If you're listening to us on the Fringe FM, stay tuned for Joe Roop Lighting the Void. If you're listening to us on any other platform, stay tuned for a third hour of Troubled Minds coming up. And as we finish, thank you for listening. From our Troubled Minds to yours, have a great night. That was a uh, perfect timing for the music to end right at exactly nine o'clock. All right, let's uh, let's go right back to Joe. Sorry about that, Joe. Uh, go right ahead, sir. <laughs> we are off the radio. <laughs> no, like I was saying, uh, one of the authors I like uh, is Terry Pratchett. Literally, how this guy's mind works, like Anne Rice. I mean, it's amazing how they can formulate a world, every detail, in their own minds. You know in our minds, in our imagination, that we can formulate that, whether it's God or whoever gave us that, it's just, it's a gift. I mean, it, it's, that we can do that. I wonder if, you know, it, that probably is what separates us, I would think, maybe from from animals. I mean, I think animals have emotion and all of those things, but I think the ability of, for us to imagine uh, different worlds, different futures, uh, has pushed us through time.
you know, uh, reverence for the dead and what might happen after we die. I mean, a lot of these stories uh, with Anne Rice, the vampires. I think every vampire story that I've seen since then, you know, including um, what we do in the shadows, which is a very comedy spoof take on vampires. But, you know, to, to be what it is to live that long uh, and get bored with life. Um, you know, a lot of these vampires, an in, in interview with the vampire, the one that I, you know, remember the most, um, you know, rise to power, fall to power, tragedy, always tragedy, always a run. But uh, that's really it. You know, that's, that's it. I, you know, sharing some authors. Reading is one thing that I do miss that I wish I could do more of. Uh, read a lot in college, read a lot up to a couple of years ago. Um, sometimes now I'll buy the books, but I don't read the books. Or if I find myself looking at books, they tend to be political. And then I just get angry and try not to read them. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. Um, a little more fiction, you know, a little more fiction escapism, I think, is uh, what we all need. Um, you know, and that's about it. So I will leave everybody with pets. And uh, maybe I'll call you guys tomorrow. Have a good week. Do the best, Joe. Happy Monday, my friend. Uh, thanks for calling. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks. There you go. Great stuff as always. Uh, again, like I always say, and it's, it's been that way forever that uh, the, 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 uh, the secret weapon of this show is you, the callers, uh, the people that listen, the people that contribute, all the, all the great uh, eyes and ears that are out there in the chat uh, doing their thing and uh, just, just sending inspiration. And that's what this is about. Tonight we're talking about inspiration in particular. Um, and because, well, it's uh, it just been stoked by uh, you know, the passing of a great one. Uh, let's call her a great, uh, a, a, instead of uh, like Lovecraft, a great old one. We'll just call Anne Rice a great one and she's uh she, she inspired a generation for not only uh the, the thing about uh vampires but uh again spawned new shows and you gotta you gotta also realize that she took an entire genre of horror of the the Bram stokers of dracula and completely breathed new life into the entire thing and changed it into something completely different, right? Similar, familiar, but so, so, so different. Uh, some of the mythologies there, it's incredible. So we'll get to Magnus and uh, the story of Lestat in a little bit. Just uh, just real quick to make, let me make my metaphor. But if not, like always, right, I'm, I'm not bummed if uh, I've prepared something to talk about and instead we get too many callers. I'd rather talk to you. No matter what, I'd rather talk to you guys. So uh, as we continue talking about inspiration here considering well Anne Rice is a great one and uh, passing on passing the torch maybe on to the next generation well uh, what is inspiration to you what is this about and uh, do you think that this is important do you think storytelling is an important thing like uh, we've been talking about all night and as Derek described there and as Joe was talking about uh, these things could be uh, maybe the most important thing um, if not now maybe in the near future and I think that's part of part of the thing we're talking about here and uh, yeah that's what's up so we're going to take a quick break because we didn't do it. We skipped it to go back to Joe's phone call. So what we're going to do is we got a third hour of Trouble Minds coming up. We are now off the radio, so we got a little more time, no commercial interruptions, and we can take your phone calls if you prefer to talk about this stuff. But what are your thoughts on Anne Rice? What are your thoughts on writing? What about uh, the, the writing and, of course, the oral tradition? Uh, if you remember in terms of uh, the Bible, right, uh, the, the four Gospels were not uh, contemporaries of Jesus. They were like a hundred years later type of thing, kind of uh, writing down oral tradition from a previous lifetime. So we're talking about like even even in the New Testament of the Bible, we're talking about oral tradition being captured and then written down as well uh, word of mouth and the rest of this so uh, a lot, lot to talk about here there's a lot of parallels there's a lot of amazing inspiring stories from the past and hopefully uh, from the future and that's what's going on here so again we're going to take a quick break if you want to be part of the show 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 here we go little music to keep you company until we return don't go anywhere more troubled minds on the way two minute break Two minutes. Be right back. More Troubled Minds. All right. 
right, welcome back to Troubled Minds Radio. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and tonight we're talking about inspiration. We're talking about the passing of Anne Rice this weekend uh, at age 80 and uh, how she inspired a generation, how she took an old story of the vampire, right? Vlad Tepes, as it were, and uh, of course, uh, Nosferatu. We're talking about Bram Stoker. We're talking about a bunch of these old stories that she really made her own. She took the uh, old mythologies and created a new mythology. And if that is an inspiration to uh, spawn who knows how many shows on top of that, uh, you can you can name them from the last 20 years. Tons and tons of vampire shows and movies that were directly inspired by Anne Rice. And that's what we're talking about tonight. So not just Anne Rice in particular, but inspiration in general and the way that works. So we got a, a couple calls here. We're going to go to Matt and then we'll go to uh, Tam Bam after that. Hang tight, Tam Bam. We'll get to you in just sec i think matt beat you by just a second here so let's go to uh matt in california what's up my friend welcome to the show how are you hey mike how's it going ah oh, doing very well thank you go right ahead what are your thoughts yeah. on inspiration uh, I, I loved your comment on the bard by the way the plus one to all stats that was amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll talk about that but um i just want to say you know i i'm glad you did the show um because it is like an honor honoring her um I found, you know, I found out Sunday morning, very early in the morning, and it kind of ruined my day, right? <laughs> but um, I read her books. I was like, I was like 13 or 14 years old when I read those books, and I don't, I remember them being really good. I don't remember a lot, but I remember them being good. And the way he said, the way she wrote, and the way she, like, painted a picture in my mind, like I could see what, she, you know, what she was writing. Um, I think that's really, um, that was good. And yeah, it was a sad day for, um, you know, for art and history and for all the vampire lore. And, uh, I'm glad you're doing the show, man. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you appreciate it. And and again, right, so it, it, it comes down to that inspiration bit. It comes down to, you know, if it's not her, it's somebody else. Everybody's got something. And I think this is critically yeah. important, and it's one of those things that we miss. We miss so often. You know, it's all politics all the time. It's all, it's all this garbage that we're always talking about in the news cycles and all, you know, tons and tons of stuff. Like, science is cool. Science is fine. Science is fun. But, I mean, if we're not talking about adding some maybe juice to the science and kind of looking at it in the way that Arthur C. Clarke did... Well, uh, I don't know. Where, where Where is the inspiration, right? And I think that's part of what we do here, kind of storytelling on the fly, but also, right, It's it pales in comparison to an, a real artist, right? Somebody who can, like you said, when you read it, like it's almost like you're watching a movie. It's so vivid, the things she's describing. It's unbelievable. Amazing stuff. But yeah, sorry, sorry go right ahead. Yeah, I just think it's important, um, like what you're saying. I, I'm fully agreeing with you this time. You know, it is important that we tell stories orally and write and write them down um, and tell stories because, you know, we need that. Um, talking about like in the future dystopia when they're like burning books and stuff, you know, that's no good. <laughs> so we need those stories. We need to be doing like we're doing right now, telling stories and um, just sharing information from our minds as well. And um, I just want to say one of, you know, I'll talk about inspiration. Um, I think that um, a lot of my life I was kind of like depressed about it. Cause I didn't like, I'm one of those people. I like I'll start projects, but I won't finish them. And I think um, one of the biggest inspirations to me in the last couple of years has been the show um, Troubled Minds because I get to meet, I met a lot of cool people and um, like-minded conversations and a lot of my inspiration comes from you guys. So I thank you for that. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a part you, of it. You know, you know, yeah, you know who you are. I can't name every, I can't name everybody. Yeah, don't try because the second you do, you leave somebody out. And, so, <laughs> and Robert will be miffed. What's up, Robert? I'm talking to you, buddy. <laughs> I left Robert out one time, and I'll never hear the end of it. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I mean, uh, and you're and you're part of that. You're part of that group, and and that's that's exactly what's going on here. Is that uh, same thing, right? Uh, I, I never dreamed we'd get here where we were like uh, storytelling back and forth, sort of on the fly. Uh, you know, kind of looking at not just well uh, inspiration, but uh, sort of the nature. of reality and kind of kicking it back and forth like a soccer ball i mean that's that's incredible to me and, we, and we're uh, again hopefully you know god willing we're just getting started my brother thank you thank you for uh being part of that thank you for caring and uh, being part of that same inspiration you're definitely part of that crew um tell us about the bard man yeah, unless so, you got something else go ahead go ahead <laughs> uh, i was gonna say um 
um, I'm inspired to start drawing in, and um, hopefully you guys could see more art from me coming up. For sure. Um, but yeah, the see bard. It, love yeah, to see it. Um, <laughs> the bard, I always play a bard because it's one of those things that, you know, I'm not really good at any one thing, but I'm okay at a whole bunch of things. <laughs> it's like a jack of all trades, we call it. <laughs> and uh, that's what the bards, you know, they sing the songs, they told the stories, and um, they kept the traditions alive, the stories alive. And uh, part of the, like in video games and stuff, you know, the, like the whole thing was, is um, they're like support. They like support the group. Like, like you say, what do you say? I'm me, you're you, you know? Like, I'm not the best fighter, but I'll help the best fighter. I'm not the best, you know, artist or whatever, but I'll help, you know, I'll help everybody. I want to help everybody achieve the goal, you know? Yeah, it, I, I like that. Yeah, it's a good thing. I I think that uh, in in terms of like um, you know inspiration or even even like just doing the simple things, right? Like this this is a simple thing. We're we're just talking, right? It's a simple thing, but like I think I think we sell ourselves short so often in these these inspiration categories that we we kind of don't know how far that reaches, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and so like, like, you know, my advice there to not just you to everybody's don't sell yourself short. I'm not good at a lot of things, right? Like I'm good at some things, but there's a ton of things I'm not good at and, and that's okay. Right. I'm barely good at this, but it's been three, three and a half years of practice. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's one of those things where it's like, it's okay because if you're inspired to do it, then maybe you were meant to do it, you know, do it, get, get in there and get it done. And I'll tell a story about that. I'll get to Magnus. And, um, I keep, I keep saying that, but it, it's literally a perfect metaphor for exactly what you're talking about for life, for getting that first yeah. story out for people hearing it. But yeah, go ahead, sir. No, that's good. Uh, I want to hear that story, but, um, yeah, I just, sometimes I just need like this episode was perfect for me right now to, um, like you said, just kind of light up, you know, Slap me around. Tell me, you know, <laughs> get, do it, <laughs> do it, get it done. Absolutely. Get it done, man. Get <laughs> thanks, it done. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> You're the best. Uh, anything else? Uh, no, you guys have a good night. Thanks. Thank you for the show. Appreciate it, man. Matt in California. Great stuff as always. Uh, this is this is part of it, right? This is part of that inspiration cycle of us spending time together and doing that. Uh, kicking, uh, and I like the term, kicking reality back and forth like a soccer ball. And uh, there we go. I just wait. I was waiting just for you, Abigail. Here we go. Just uh, real quick. Let me ban this sucker. Adios, spammer. Get lost. Owned. <laughs> Owned. There you go. Uh, I'm not sure uh, teabagging uh, in the chat is appropriate at this time, but uh, you can use your imagination creatively. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. What else? What else? Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, good stuff. Let's uh, let's go. So we're, we're talking about Anne Rice tonight. We're talking about inspiration. We're talking about those maybe getting their first story out. We're, you know, again, like if you're drawn to it, maybe you were meant to do it and you just don't know it yet, you know? And I always make the joke with Rohan. We're talking about podcasting. He's, he just started his Follow the Exiled Minds podcast, everybody. Link in the description. Follow Rohan below. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, the joke is always this, right? You know how you get to Carnegie Hall, don't you? Practice right practice and if you're drawn to it maybe you were meant to do it maybe you have like a a, a a hidden talent that's just waiting to to blossom and you just have to give it a little bit of water just a little bit of water right and that's it and that's what it's all about so that's what we're talking about tonight with the passing of Anne rice inspiring an entire generation an entire generation of uh, comic books and tvs and other books and i mean surely she inspired twilight and that thing went insane made like billions of dollars or something crazy like that but anyway that's what we're talking about tonight inspiration we're talking about how it fits into the zeitgeist how important is this can it bridge generations and well I'm taking your call 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Let's go to our good buddy, Tam Bam. Welcome back, Tam. Tam's been away for a very long time, and uh, she had a fire and some other business. Welcome back, Tam. Good to see you back in the chat and back in the uh, the voice here. How are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? Oh, doing very well, thanks. Uh, nothing burned down here, yeah. so doing well. <laughs> so frustrating. The substation burned down. So this whole area had no power two weeks. That's a long time. I went camping in my own house with the generator. <laughs> camping in your own house. Love it. Love it. See, that's inspiration right there. <laughs> Maybe I that- shouldn't have barbecue anymore. I can't eat barbecue. <laughs> 
anymore. Fair enough. Um, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, so, I missed you guys. I missed you guys. Thank yeah, you. For real. We missed you as well. It was kind of I actually started to like get outside PMS, beyond my PMS, because I was throwing extreme amounts of adult tantrums because I wasn't, I didn't have my show. It's a problem. <laughs> well, we were thinking about you, so uh, I did. I did report the uh, to to everybody that you were you uh, were waylaid and you would be back soon. So, so welcome back. Glad to have you back, my friend. What are your What, what are your thoughts on 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 this inspiration bit? Well, Anne Rice. Oh, what a disaster! I wish she was sixty years. Well, I wish she was only sixty now, so she can carry on writing. You know, I, I, I wish she didn't have to. She, it's it's. We need her now because I agree. she's, she's totally right. We need her now more than ever because this is where our minds are all, all everyone's minds are expanding. They're finally opening and, and, you know, we need her. And I just, it's such devastating news for me. Um, but did you know that Anne Rice was also a, a wrote Christian literature? Yes. Yes. And erotic Isn't that literature. And erotica. <laughs> Ooh. Exactly. <laughs> yep. She did it all. I mean, her mind, she didn't just have one thing. She had a million things. I mean, that's talent in itself. Yeah. I'm not going to um, lie. Just, well, okay. I'm not going to say it, but, but go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Say it. Uh, okay. I'm, uh, uh, Anne Rice is one of those authors, right? Where it, it, it's rare, but uh, kind of the written word, uh, reading it, you, you're like, you turn the page, turn the page, turn the page. And then you, fi- you find yourself sitting there, uh, let's just say aroused, right? And it's not, and it's not necessarily yeah. a sexual thing. It's just a, like, like, God damn, like, how does she do this? Like, it, it is unreal how she was able to weave words like that and paint pictures. Like, um, like Matt said, it was like, it, reading is like, watching a movie with her it's insane it's absolutely insane but yeah yeah uh, go right ahead you can you can see why she was good yeah. at that erotica i never read any of those books but she weaved it into her vampire stories and there's some good stuff in there definitely some good stuff there really is i mean interview with the vampire slayed me i mean the movie is nothing compared to her book yeah yeah that, really? that, that mo- those movies were so garbage it's it's not even close yeah yeah unfortunately yeah. i'm actually going to reread all her books again because geez she just paints this move, movie in my mind that I just can't escape from. And then I think about it forever and, it, and it's just, it's mind boggling. Anyway, so I wanted to just say that, um, you know, storytelling is, is such an art. Uh, writing in a, in, is an art in itself, like Anne Rice. But storytelling is, is also just a, such a brilliant art. And like you, you're a storyteller, you know, you're, you're also a storyteller. But has anyone even um, looked at John Borlin? I mean, he's an amazing, amazing storyteller. Sorry, the birds are attacking me. That's right. Dodge, dodge. Duck, it's... dog. Duck, duck, dodge. Weave. Where's my tennis racket? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. <laughs> so um, what, what really gets to me is what I've always wanted to know. What inspires those readers, uh, writers? Like Anne Rice, come on, she's got to have some kind. I mean, interview with a vampire. Who would have thought that maybe she did actually have an interview with the vampire? Right. Did it come from truth? Right. Did, did she sit down and this guy t- told her this absolutely amazing story that she turned into a novel and called it fiction? Her version of fiction is that vampire's reality. I mean, it's got to come from somewhere. People just don't naturally think of these things. So, I mean, if I knew she was going to die, I would have phoned her and, like, picked her brain and really asked her, did she really have an interview with an actual vampire? I mean, because it's inspired her whole list of books, and that's really crazy to me. And I've been hearing a lot of small talk about, fuck off, birds. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, um, they really are. I've been hearing a lot of uh, whispers and talk about vampires, and there's actually a vampire hunter out there. Okay, it might be a joke because he is on TikTok, but I mean, he really gets into the nitty gritty of, you know, vampire hunting, and he sometimes shows some footage. So I kind of, oh, is it real? Isn't it? Is it for clout? The inspiration behind all writers is what gets me, right? 
All right. Yeah, no, that's that's what it's all about. That, that's exactly what it's all about. I, I like how you 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 brought up the where, what is that inspiration? It almost seems like she was there, right? Like she she was uh, perched over the shoulder of the reporter having the interview with the vampires. Like she was in the room, you know. And that that's the type of uh, that bit that just makes you wonder, right? Uh, I do know. So interestingly, she grew up or didn't grow up, but she spent time again in the San Francisco Bay Area, and you could see it in some of her writing. She describes, uh, you know, being on the coast and. and central california and the rest of that she and she spent some time in uh new orleans with uh louisiana with uh, that that uh that humid southern right like like those kudzu vines all over the place and just that like like she, she describes that super well and uh, like she's she writes about the things she experienced right the places at least and kind of weaves that in and so that's why it seems so real because those places are real and uh, one thing in particular, too, I know one of the actual um, inspirations for Anne Rice and the vampire Lestat is that there's that story about a vampire in New Orleans um, that pops up yeah. at Mardi Gras from time to time. Have you heard this guy? So so he's got yeah, a story. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so she was inspired by the story of this vampire that pops up from time to time. Uh, and they said he's been around under the same name for a couple hundred years in New Orleans. And uh, he shows up and people recognize him as this old older uh, uh, aristocrat from back in the you know 1600s 1700s 1800s that the same person has been around in the area for a very long time and that old story like an, it's an actual folklore uh, local mythology sort of thing that that inspired her to write these vampire books um so yeah, pretty wild stuff right again like you're taking one story and uh, like i always say standing on the shoulders of giants really becoming uh taking a number of stories and then turning them into uh something so much better than them that some of their parts is, is incredible but that's that's how she did some of it i do know that much other the rest i wish i knew her secrets listen yeah but you you if she's incorporate if she incorporated oh it's so sad to say but if she incorporated some of her travels and her experiences into her books it must come from somewhere so she must have met a particular vampire to have incorporated this into fiction into into fiction so her reality was actually into a book it must be because if she if she can't just say okay well what's new orleans and here are, let's talk about new orleans and the vampire it must have you know that you know everyone knows that new orleans is um vampire central okay this is where they're all like you know they're coverners and they, they all get together. Um, but so it must be real. I, I can't even explain it. It has to be real. It ha- there has to be some kind of truth in there. She can't just put her reality into a book and not add the rest of her reality. And then, you know, it's, I don't know. I'm confused, but I love her and I'm so sad she died. Yeah, it's a shame. Um, I do. I'm going to do what you what you what you described. I still have all her books. We're going through some old books and stuff, and I still got all the original ones I read. So I'm going to go back and uh, definitely read at least the Vampire Lestat again. That was so 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 good, so good. Um, so and then from her books, sorry, no, go ahead. From her books comes a wealth of vampire movies, and uh, from the vampires is the lichens, and you know all, all the stories, all this. F- stuff it comes from somewhere it can't just be some someone's imagination it cannot people just don't think like that so uh, obviously vlad was you know was a different kind of story um it was actually a real story but obviously made into you know grossly um made it into some weird movie but um it has to be true come on i can't i can't live in a world where vampires aren't real (laughs) <laughs> i'm with you I, I can't i can't live in a world where we can't kick the soccer ball of reality back and forth amongst friends <laughs> on a random weeknight exactly <laughs> and you know in a way she like stays immortal you know you know who's, who was talking about it earlier someone called in it's fucking birds i swear I'm go- they're gonna kill me <laughs> sorry you're good you're good good claws um um they become immortal and um you know the same with you know king james who wrote the bible he wasn't a christian he just wanted to stay mortal and therefore made the king james bible um and yeah so he's just immortal and there's hope that 
you know, Anne Rice stays immortal as she is and then just vampires maybe come to light one day and through Mardi Gras, shit, I'm scared, actually. I think there might be some in Cape Town, in South Africa, Cape Town, because we've got massive Mardi Gras down there. Um, so, yeah, I really do think there must be some down there. What is it with Mardi Gras and vampires? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I so don't know. anyway, I popped in to say hi, and I'm back, and and Rice Tram. Right on. Welcome back. We missed you, Tam. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for saying hi. Uh, say hi to the family for us, and uh, you're the best. Thanks. Can I stay on and just listen? Of course. Uh, just go ahead and mute up pretty please so we don't hear the birds squawking in the background, and you're good to go. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> Thanks, Tam. Always a pleasure. Thanks. Bye. Goodbye. All right. So we're, we're we're still talking about this, right? And here, I'll tell the story about Magnus in just a sec here. Um, and again, like it's a kind of a primer to uh, the people who don't know Anne Rice. But but check this out. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, this is the uh, oral tradition, and this is what we're talking about tonight. Okay. Uh, the thing is that uh, now before the Gospels were composed, Jesus's first followers sustained his memory by sharing stories of his life death and teachings and that's what i'm saying so like uh, the, the the new testament is not actually contemporary to the life of jesus it's like a lifetime later or even even beyond that and so the the you know what we know is the bible and the new testament as it begins with matthew mark luke and john and that whole bit is that uh, it, it was passed on oral tradition and so you see the power that this can have uh, literally not just one generation but ripple effects generation to generation to generation and we're talking like what 20 or 20 some generations later from that point it, it's pretty wild and so this is this is the same thing we've been talking about tonight is the you know unfortunately with the passing of Anne Rice uh, it's a little bit of time for uh, you know honoring her legacy and uh, also just considering uh, th- just the impact that stories like this have on the world around us and and again like I said you know just just back to the Bible for a moment uh, think about how many lives that has changed and you know you can argue however you want to argue religion this that the other thing but it's not about that it's about the inspiration that comes from it and uh, so so you can see just a simple word of mouth and some written words and some you know the bard the power of the bard Um, I made a joke a while back that the bard always wins because the bard can tell a tale the bard can weave his story. The bard can uh, do things that just a regular newspaper journalist cannot. And uh, there's some power there. And it's a, it's a magnificent thing. So look and hear your thoughts on this, guys. We're still talking about Anne Rice tonight. We're talking about the power of inspiration. Does this actually transcend generations? And I think we proved tonight uh, just so far it does. Just looking at this biblical story here with the New Testament and the rest of that uh, is not contemporary to the life of Jesus. It is the oral tradition written down after the fact by bards, right? By people that uh, were told these stories secondhand and thirdhand and even fourthhand that wrote these things down uh, to preserve them for eternity. And like uh, Tam said right there, Tam Bam, welcome back. Uh, She said that, uh, you know, it, it is a way, sort of, we talk about immortality a lot, right? We talk about leaving a legacy. We talk about all of this stuff on this show, but not really from like normal people like us. We talk about uh, more like a a legacy of uh, well, uh, the the elites, right? Uh, what what is uh, Elon Musk's legacy going to be, or Jeff Bezos, or you know what I mean? Like that's a lot of the conversation we have. But you know what? Who gives a shit? Like, let history decide that. We have a legacy, too. We're human beings, too. We have stories to tell, also. And uh, there you go. So we're still talking about this. I'll get to Magnus in just a sec. Still taking your phone calls. What are your thoughts on Anne Rice, inspiration? Does this span generations? And, well, uh, what is life without it? A lot of questions here, a lot of things on our mind, and uh, all kinds of good stuff. So let's do this real quick. Let's get to, uh, let's get to Magnus. Now, now, the way this begins in, in uh, so this isn't the beginning of the story, all right, of the, the Anne Rice uh, legacy and all the rest of that. Uh, but the Vampire Lestat begins in Interview with the Vampire. I'm not going to talk about that because it's, uh, it's, it's got its own movie and most people have seen it. Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, the whole thing. Uh, what was, um, I can't remember the, the little girl's name. Uh, anyway, she's uh, changed quite a lot since then. But uh, the thing is that uh, th- this is the thing, right? The craziest part is that the first story you tell that's your story is probably the most powerful. And let me make the case. I'll make the case with Magnus. 
All right. Now, in the Vampire Lestat, which is book two of the Vampire Chronicles, uh, it begins with uh, the Lestat as not a vampire, of course. He's in his mortal life. He doesn't have a great relationship with his father. This is all from memory, so if I'm off a little bit, uh, you guys can forgive me. But I'm going to just paraphrase this real fast and boil it down to make my point. So he ends up out in the middle of nowhere by himself because he's unafraid. Because he's, uh, he's, he's that guy, like I said previously, he's, he's that person that pushes boundaries. He's, he's literally constantly pushing the envelope because he, he can, he doesn't feel alive unless he does. And so he's a, he's a chief rule breaker. It's how he does things. So he finds himself out a little bit further than he should in the snow with his hunting dogs, knowing there's a pack of wolves around. Well, he gets accosted by wolves and, uh, the pack of wolves, they come at him. And uh, they end up killing his dogs and nearly killing him. But he single-handedly fends off the pack of wolves, right? Fearlessly, stupid, stupidly fearlessly, all right? And this is, I think it's 17th or 18th century France. I can't know. I can't remember exactly when it was. But that's how it begins, all right? And so he ends up uh, living, uh, going to Paris and uh, becoming a theater actor and all the rest of this. And while he's there with his friend Louis, uh he ends up with this theater actor thing going on and an audience watching and he feels eyes on him eyes watching like burning into him he doesn't know where it's coming from but he knows he's being watched by something that doesn't seem natural something supernatural and this whatever this entity is out there in the crowd that's watching him is telling him telepathically wolf killer it's like it knows all right. And of course, this is Magnus. And again, I'm not going to spoil too much of this because uh, you guys should read this. Like I said, even even a brief synopsis of this story it pales, pales in comparison to the way she wrote this. But point being this in the vampire mythologies that she wrote, that Anne Rice wrote, um, it's basically the the uh, older. So, OK, so if you make a new vampire, you bite them, right? You drain their blood and then you the vampire slashes their wrist and gives the blood back. And it's like this unholy exchange, blood exchange, all right? And you do this a couple, three times, and the person dies. But then they come back as an undead, as a vampire, all right? Now, the way this works is uh, the the uh, levels of vampires, as she laid them out, are weaker or stronger based on who created them. So if you got the very first vampire from the dawn of time, Creating you as a vampire, you're going to be extremely strong because of the base blood that she's got in her, right? Akasha, right? Uh, Akasha and Enkil, a whole other story. But also, every time you make a vampire, the strength of your own blood diminishes each vampire. So they become lesser and lesser vampires, all right? Now, here's the craziest part, and this gets back to the whole, the whole, my whole point, my whole analogy of telling this story, and uh, back to us telling our own stories, is Magnus was mad. He was, a, he was a crazy vampire, and he was searching for a century or more of somebody that looked like Lestat, blonde hair, blue eyes, and he wanted somebody fearless. He wanted to make the vampire that would shake up the world. And so he actually had this tower and he was capturing people and trying to find out if they would spit in the face of the devil. And that is who he wanted to make the vampire out of. And so he found Lestat on that stage in Paris. I think it's the 1800s is when this was going on. And he ended up creating the vampire he desired. But it was the only vampire he ever made. And as a result... He created a very powerful Lestat. So again, you see how this works. And my point here is bringing it back to storytelling is that the very first one you tell is the most powerful because it's yours, because it breaks the ice, because it puts it out there. And if you never tell that first story, the second story never comes. The third story never comes. And the very first one is the most powerful in many, many, many different ways. And I'm telling you, if you're out there and you're inspired by anything at all, don't be afraid. That was the vampire Lestat. He was unafraid. And that's why he was created by Magnus. I'm not going to tell you what happened to Magnus, but he only made one vampire, and it was Lestat, because he wanted a fearless rule breaker that would stir up the world. And well, go read the books. 
Go read the books. I'm telling you, it's incredible. It's it's a fun ride. It's pretty pretty good stuff. But uh, that's what this comes back, right? So he made his first vampire, and he saved all of his strength and all of his energy for the one. Your story, the first one, is also the most powerful. Get it out there. Do it. Don't wait. Time's ticking. We only have so much time on this earth, and time is greater than money. Get it. Go be inspired. Tell your story. Love to hear your thoughts tonight. Still talking about Anne Rice and considering all the things. There's my little analogy with uh, Magnus, who created uh, the vampire Lestat, and he was a fearless. Uh, I think that's the best part about uh, Lestat is he pushed all the envelopes, all the angles. He literally, I'm not going to tell you because it's spoilers and spoilers, but he tried everything, and it led him to the earliest vampires in history. Check it out. I'm telling you, the mythologies in her books are incredible. Love to hear your thoughts talking about Anne Rice tonight, talking about inspiration. I'm talking about your story and how come you haven't told it yet. And uh, that's what's going on. If you want to be part of the show, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Let's go over to Discord or sorry, uh, Rockfin and say hi over there. What's going on, guys? Uh, Who else is here? Let's see. Uh, what's up? Uh, had some technical issues. What's going on? Uh, da, da. What's up, Liam? Uh, there we go. Robert, uh, thank you. Thank you for the tip on Rockfin. Appreciate that very much. He says, too many novels these days use the trope of the depressed or underappreciated kid who is pulled away from his pathetic environment and told he or she is the chosen one. Few novels focus plot in the real world these days. Just saw some copycat, uh, just some copycat fantasy world. What are those carrying forth the legacy of Steinbeck, Hemingway, Harper Lee, even Irwin Shaw? And that's a fantastic statement there. And that's what we're talking about tonight. It's not about, you don't have to be famous, right? You don't have to be extraordinary. You just have to be you. Like I say about this, about this show too, you don't have to be any of those things. You just have to be you. That's it. That's the most important thing. But remember, all of that power you have will culminate when you get it out there, whatever that story is. What's going on, guys? I see you there. Uh, let's see. Uh, got getting booted. Technical issues over on Rockfin. Yep, it's not. It has, it has its issues, let's say. But it is definitely they're not going to kick us out for, uh, for, for talking about things. Um, what's going on? Uh, Robert also adds, all fiction writers are required to lie a story into existence. All fiction is a lie told convincingly. When I write a story, I'm telling a tall story, which is more a more gentle definition of lying. There you go. I really didn't accept my own talent, Liam, until Michael recommended my book, even though some of those stories earned my prize money. There you go. I do like uh, I do like Robert's um, his uh, <laughs> his his advice earlier. Uh, uh, win, <laughs> win, write stories, enter competitions, win the competitions. I love it. <laughs> win, get out there and win. Right? Uh, super, super good stuff. I'm looking to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts on this? On Anne Rice? On inspiration? Do you think this is as important as anything else? And uh, how high up on the list is this? If you want to be part of the show, love to hear your thoughts. Seven zero two nine five seven one zero three seven. And uh, there you go. Let's see. Um, who else? Let's go back to the chat. What's up, Tam Bam? I missed you guys so much. Uh, it goes the other way. Appreciate that. Uh, we missed you as well. Thanks for thanks for uh, missing us, and thanks for coming back with a, with a excited gusto behind you. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Um, Bernay says, seems unlikely without some type of intervention, fungi or darker intervention. What are we talking about here? Um, uh, Night Stalker says, Lovecraft's stories come from dreams, he said. He thought those things existed somewhere. Yeah, that's pretty wild. <laughs> that's pretty wild. All right, so that's what we're talking about tonight. Uh, the rest of this, and I don't know. How do you guys feel? How's everybody feeling tonight? Happy Monday. Just talking about Anne Rice, unfortunately, passing away. But, uh, you know, hopefully this is her her step into immortality. And, uh, well, you know, it's it's again, like, uh, like Derek was saying earlier, it's kind of like that story of Coco. It's like, um, you know, people are alive as long as people remember them. And so there's uh, there's something to that. And I think that uh, you know, we, it, it's up to us now to keep the, the legacy of Anne Rice alive with uh, not just telling her stories, but also, um, you know, uh, building upon them and uh, being inspired by them and telling our own stories. I think that's what this is all about. And that's why that's why I wanted to do this tonight, because I, I think it is important. I think inspiration is one of those things that, uh, like I said, imagine life devoid of inspiration. I, I can't. I can't. 
And, and so the tragic part of that is there's some people that live their life that way, you know, like the it, it, mental health stuff, you know, uh, like it, uh, just, just huge poverty, just, you know, they're, they're, I'm blessed. We're blessed. Be, be, feel, feel grateful again, like back to the upside down and, uh, Thanksgiving and, you know, the, the one day a week we feel thankful for things. Nah, man, like <laughs> every day, every day, right? Think about how much worse it, it could all be. And uh, there we go. There we go. What's going on, guys? Uh, let's see. Let's see in the chat. Uh, let's see. Let's see what's going on. The Night Stalker started out as a movie idea. I'm, I started to call, before I started calling into shows. Nice. You were going to make a movie? The, the Night Stalker movie? <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's great. That's great. Uh, all right. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Victor says, we are blessed. We eat, we eat EV8. What's going on, buddy? Uh, Matt says, oh, forgot to say I've been seeing a lot of people buying Anne Rice books from my work. Ah, have you? They're selling, huh? Like, it's, it's popping now. It's popping. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, when, when somebody passes away, they jump all over it. But uh, here, here's that story real quick. Again, you know, there's some there's some spoilers here, but they have the an entire fantastic vampire chronicles wiki that has all these uh, different vampires and spoilers like crazy. So don't trust me, please don't read something like this. This, but this is the vampire Magnus I was talking about that created Lestat. Don't read this. All right, don't do it. Read the books. You will you will uh, you will be be uh very very much spoiling a, a a fantastic ride it's like watching the end of a movie and then going back and watching all the rest of it, it, it don't do it but uh but yeah in case you when things happen in the books and you're not sure want to fill in some gaps this uh vampire chronicles wiki is pretty damn good but but yeah i don't know what do you guys think uh yeah, all good victor you're, you're allowed you're allowed uh what's up jennifer says the underdog story in literature is a realistic trope in history a fact a legend simply because it is true Truth. The underdog, through hardship and pain, overcomes their oppressors. And that's back to that uh, Joseph Campbell, right? That that cycle, the Hercules cycle of the hero, the Luke Skywalker, that whole uh, uh, you know anthropology um, sort of um, hero cycle. It's a thing. It's a thing for sure. And it, you know, it's kind of why it is. But I mean, I, I agree with Robert a little bit. There's there's more um, interesting ways to kind of tell that story, right? Like our, if it's up to me, our job is to actually. Um, uh, maybe maybe make it a, a layer deeper right maybe maybe find a new way to tell those same uh, same stories pretty good stuff pretty good stuff uh, so what are your thoughts i uh, got got a um, 10 15 minutes left it's up to you guys if you want to be part of the show uh, what do you think about inspiration what do you think about Anne rice what do you think about the vampire chronicles what do you think about telling your story and uh, that's what this is about tonight if you want to be part of this love to hear your thoughts 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 and uh, there you go. Liam said it. Boom. Exactly. Professor Campbell. Yeah. And I think, I think that's, um, there's a reason why you have some of these tropes, right? And, uh, we've talked about it before when, uh, when Jennifer called is that we, you know, we were saying that there, there's a reason this stuff resonates because it is the challenge of life. It is, you know, that we're, we're born and we come into our own and we go through challenges and then hopefully we emerge triumphant, you know, it's a cycle. And it's a life cycle. It's a cycle of life. It is that, you know, Lion King, the circle of life and Rafiki holding up a uh, baby Simba, you know, for all to see. It is that that cycle. And that's what we're talking about. Uh, that and all the rest of this. Pretty good stuff. Um, so love to hear your thoughts. Do you want to be part of the show? 702-957-1037. Uh, we got Tam drawing some quick art in the uh, Discord. If you guys haven't joined the Discord. Nice. Very nice, Tam. Very nice. Uh, get in here. If you haven't joined the Discord, troubleminds.org. Click the Discord link and uh, easy as that. You can be on the show or just uh, join join the chat and hang out and all the rest of that. There's Tam. Uh, Tam in there doing some sketching, doodling, and some great art and just pasting it in, checking it out. Um, so let's see. Um, let's see. Um, ba, 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 ba. Let's see. All right. What do we got? What do we got? Uh, let's see. Um, um, through hardship and pain, Jennifer continues, overcomes their oppressors, stands and represents the common is why the trope is so feared even today by oppressors and ill earned people. And, and well, that's exactly it. It's, it's standing up. Right. And and like like I said, right back to Magnus creating the, that first vampire, waiting all that time to tell the perfect tale and putting it into uh, the perfect individual. And uh, I think that's the most powerful. That's the most powerful thing. Right. Wait to the moment is right or get it ready and work nose to the grindstone like i always say time and pressure time and pressure right it's a it's one of those things that um if you take if you take water and you give it time and you give it it provides its own pressure running water cuts the grand canyon out of rock 
time and pressure time and pressure let's go to uh let's go to our good buddy jay we got jay in new york what's up buddy how are you tonight welcome to the show um sorry it took me an extra second um to shut that off can you hear me loud and clear sir go right ahead um yeah that's sad news today definitely but i just i remember that I was working in bars at the time that those books were really hip and everything else like that. And it was like, people were like, hurry up and finish reading that book so I can borrow it, you know? And people, it was one of those ones that once you start, you just never really put it down. It was like, I'll read, you know, 12 more chapters before I go to bed. You know, another 12 chapters, another 12 chapters. You know, and just kept going and going and going. I mean, you're right that she could really like just like grab you and bring you into her book like you were living in it. I don't know. She was a very brilliant writer. I, you know, I found myself really enjoying a lot of those books. You know, the Tales of the Body Thief and stuff like that. That was one that really got me. And then there's just I also I look at is how much that's that's come into the show i mean a lot of the things that we've talked about i mean she bounces in and out of our conversations all the time yeah exactly exactly uh like uh, every, every every time i bring up a any sort of vampire i think Anne rice i don't think any of the other stuff right i don't think underworld as great as that was uh buffy i've seen a little bit of that like there's there's so many other ones that are good but i don't know i always go back i, th- I think it's because i read all the books right i think that's probably it. like like the i think i read the first five of her books and man i'm telling you culminating in mem knock the devil remember when i said that uh, magnus was uh, looking for a vampire that would spit in the face of the devil well, he found him. Read it. <laughs> read it. Go read it, guys. It's amazing. But yeah, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it just it, that takes a special kind of writer to do that. I mean, you know, how many books? And I mean, there's tons and tons of her books because she was across different genres. You know, just she, you know, did a really great job of that. You know, I mean, she's going to be remembered forever. I mean, that probably changed the face of what we thought of vampires, you know, and really gave it that mystic aromic lure of it all. I mean, I remember there, there were people that were dressing like them and, you know, had their little vampire things. I mean, I remember at one point there was a couple of bars that opened up in downtown Cincinnati that had that whole kind of like goth movement to it. And that was all, you know, Anne Rice inspired. I mean, it's just that, you know, she will, she'll live forever. I mean, the people will tell the stories of her for, you know, lots of time to come because she was so good at it. And then like, you know, Matt mentioning, you know, the fact that she died, lots of people were, you know, buying tons and tons of books now. So they're going to read them again and pass that on. And, you know, it, It'll go on as long as people continue to remember, you know, just talk about it. And I don't know. I think that she was at a place that she really, you know, grabbed a lot of people. And, you know, just with the brilliance of her writing, you keep them up. Because, you know, it was a girlfriend kind of thing. She's like, oh, you should try this book. And I was like, oh, I'm not really interested in it. And I was like, you pick the thing up. And then I was like, well, the next thing you know, it's like, where's the next book? <laughs> Give me the next he, he, one. This, it's not out yet. What do you mean it's not out yet? You know, you can't just leave a story hang like that. And then, you know, people were waiting. You know, I remember people running down to Boscov's. It's a department store that we have downtown here. And it's, you know, running down there to grab the book and then they're gone. So, you know, people are trading them. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. It was just sad. I just, I don't know. I really appreciated Dan Rice, you know. And in her books and stuff like that, I just wanted to call in and say how great that she was. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. You know, it, it's nice to you know. I mean, it's almost like she came through like the show does, where we have a conversation with the different things. I mean, I think she brought something to light that people talked about. You know, there was conversations in bars. It was you know conversations amongst people about her books because so many people read them. You know, so many stories. You know came from that you know like you said the twilight series was probably most definitely you know inspired by you know Anne rice you know those people that wrote those stories that followed after vampires were probably 
you know, you could almost tell that those people read those books. You know, it was, I just, I, I look at the, his, you know, that's brilliant, you know. Very few writers for me will make me pick up a book and read it. Just nonstop, you know, some I have to work my way through, you know, and put it down for a week or two and then go back to it. There's, you know, time and everything else like that. But I made time for Anne Rice. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. And, and, that, and that's the difference, right? That's the, totally the difference when you're talking about reading something. It's like, it's almost like a school project. You want, you force yourself a little bit, but, but then that one, it was so easy. It was so easy because she was so good. Definitely. I, I remember uh, when Mem Knock the Devil came out, man, I tell you what, <laughs> I was so excited. The new Anne Rice book had come out. It was, it was just, it was like that, right? It was like, it's like waiting for that new movie finally. And it finally is in theaters, you know, I was so stoked to just go devour that. And, uh, like Tam was saying, actually, uh, she was, a she was not only a, a, you know, fantasy, uh, vampire, uh, the, the, the erotica writer. She also, uh, by the way, was, uh, she, she included that whole, uh, Jesus mythology and the, the, uh, Golgotha and, uh, you know, the whole, uh, crucifixion, that story, by the way, the veil of Veronica, it's all in Memnock the devil. So, uh, yeah, you think that, uh, you think that it's pretty decently one dimensional. If you've never read it, you're dreaming, go check it out, go check it out. I'm telling you it's uh, it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. Uh, how she, she was able to kind of, f- uh, fuse, uh, past and present, uh, mythology and uh, the current day, all in the same thing, and to still make it, make it riveting. That's uh, it's difficult to do, difficult to do. But yeah, um, so so what do you think about this inspiration bit, Jay? Do you think that uh, these these telling stories? Do you think it is as as important as anything? I, I think that's very important. I mean, I think that the conversations that we have with each other you know, the little bit of motivation, you said it, you know, just a tiny bit of water and watch it grow. You know, the beginnings with a carpenter, the beginnings with a farmer, you know, a writer or whatever, you know, you find somebody who has that little seed in them or whatever. And you tell them a story about how you started off or, you know, how things got started with you in whatever situation that is. And if that inspires only one person, then you've moved on, you know, they made it a bigger better place because now instead of one person fighting the battle there's two and how that could grow exponentially you know but just through us telling stories and having conversations together i think that's probably one of the most important things we can do is you know inspire each other and keep each other motivated through our storytelling and conversation you know i go back to this all the time i think that's one of the things that is getting taken away from us now. We don't have that interaction with people the way that we used to. People aren't doing it. You know, now we put away for a little while and all got involved in our telephones and everything else like that. Now, you know, even in, you know, there were construction. So it just, people, if they have five minutes instead of standing around telling a story where they're waiting or taking a break or something like that, everyone instantly puts their head down on their telephone. And they don't talk about anything. Exactly. They don't tell their stories, you know. Back to the brainwash and, mechanism, reading crappy articles on Reddit and whatnot. No offense to Reddit, you know, but there's a ton of shills. Actual shills like actual, like CIA or whoever paid agents on Reddit, like like literally controlling news cycles like they do in the regular news cycles. It's it's just, um, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that, again, the internet is uh, as great as it is, but at the same time, it, it's so easily... Um, manipulated you know manipulated to manipulate us and that, that's the that's the unfortunate part uh go back uh like i said like we were saying the book on your shelf cannot be edited those words are those words and that is that and uh wikipedia is not going to remove them tomorrow they may from your kindle right maybe not wikipedia but amazon may remove them from your kindle redact the book change it uh whatever because of political pressure but that book on your shelf will not change and uh Important stuff, important stuff. Um, you uh, you able to hang out a little bit? We got Rohan here that we can bring in as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'll um, meet up so we can hear him. Okay, hang tight. We'll get back here in just a sec. Let's go to uh, the mighty Rohan. Welcome, my friend. How are you? Hello, hello. 
Liam Martin, the famous Liam Martin. Welcome to the show. How you doing, my man? Test one, two. He's on a delay, I think, so he's trying to catch up here. Or we got some uh, stuff going on. What's up? Uh, let's see. Uh, back to the chat. Uh, let's see. Uh, James says, the whole soap opera sexual side of Buffy was really the only thing I didn't care for in the show. But again, to each their own. Uh, Night Stalker says, a major aspect of synchro mysticism is seeing how reality and story oh, interact. I love it. What's up, Rohan? Welcome to the show. How are you, Mike? Hello, hello. Try that again. You're cutting out. Hello, hello. I'm going to have to jump back in. Okay. All right. All right. No problem. Uh, go ahead and reboot it, and uh, we'll do our thing. I think maybe uh, the voice meter, if you hit the uh, you're using voice meter, hit the menu, and then restart audio engine. Should do it. Should do it. That's what it sounded like to me, but who knows? I don't know your exact setup. But yeah, uh, what's going on, guys? Let's go back over to the uh, to Rockfin, see, if, uh, see what's going on over there. Uh, Robert says, I wrote a highly erotic paragraph that opened my short story, The Engagement Game. My editor was almost apoplectic in urging me to delete it as inappropriate, uh, what was basically a comedy. I defied her largely because it was so were, so well written that it spurred me to some afternoon delight with the wife. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there it is, right? There it is. Like I said, uh, uh, aroused maybe is the right word. Uh, what's going on? What's going on, Rohan? If you're there, whenever you're ready, my friend, you're, you're muted. But uh, good stuff. Thank you again for the, the generous tip there on uh, Rockfin. Appreciate that, Robert. And um, yeah, what's going on, guys? How's everybody out there? We got uh, Rohan here. We're, we're here with Jay. Tam Bam's uh, muted up and listening as well, battling the birds in South Africa. And uh, let's see, Rohan said... Uh, can't hear you sorry must be an issue okay all right cool no problem no problem rohan rohan's broken and it's broken so what are we going to do we're going to keep on trucking uh there you go we're, we're kind of at the end here anyway i think it's a good time for some technical difficulties um but uh let's uh let's let's do it jay uh, what are your other thoughts on this and then we can we can do the outro the jtro if you got a jtro for us um i do um i don't know other thoughts on this is like you know Let's, you know, keep inspiring ourselves, you know, the, the little bit of positive energy that we can send out to everyone else, you know, remember these stories, conversations like we have on a daily basis, you know, get involved in those things, get involved with the people around you and tell those stories. And it's important for us to have those interactions together. I mean, I think it's something that we really need in our minds and that. I don't know. I look at, I, know, I can get at all things and start a giant conversation with Tam at the end of the show, but it just, the, the, the way children interact with each other now, you know, they don't talk about the books that they read. They don't even talk about the video games that they play, you know. They go over to each other's houses and they sit there and play video games and then they text each other in the chat during the video game instead of actually talking. That's it's weird. just. <laughs> that's super weird well because they're in the game right well you, know, you can still talk in the game you can still do do like this <laughs> like a that's what discord's for discord's for gaming that's that's so that's what <laughs> built it is them talking back and forth to each other yeah that's what it was for so you could kind of use it as a cross platform between different games that was that was kind of the whole point of uh discord maybe i should get them involved in the discord then the older ones anyway just, I don't know. I just, I, I look at it. You know, there's a Boy Scout leader for a long time. And I just watched him. And I'm like, you guys are sitting here texting each other. You're, you know, the wife sends me text messages. You know, why we're in the same house together. You know, it's just, it's, a, it's a place <laughs> that we put. Yeah, it's a place that we put ourselves. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean. I, I, I get that some of that too, but I'm, you know, here and like, I get a message from the wife, let me know what's going on in the rest of the house, <laughs> but uh, for, for obvious reasons, but yeah, I mean, uh, it, well, it is, it is, it is part of it, part of it's, it's a tool like the AI told us, right? It's a AI can be a tool for good or for bad. Uh, actually, it looks like Rohan fixed his, uh, fixed his technical issues. Uh, there we go. What's up, Rohan? The mighty Rohan. Welcome to the show. You're on with Jay, Mike, and Ted Bam's here as well. How are you, my man? Great, great. Nice to, nice to be hearing you guys. It's interesting. I'm enjoying this show. Uh, enjoying right. the show, Mike. Uh, dig it. 
Uh, can you can you do that voice meter reset as well? Just do the menu and uh, restart audio engine. I think that'll fix you up. You're a little bit crackly. I don't know if that's. All right, let me jump out and jump. Is that is that better? Okay. Is that a little bit closer? Still still crackly. It's like a it's like just a bad connection, like like a bad telephone connection. Okay, no. okay, let's drop it off. Let's drop it off, and then it's gonna work. Okay. All right. Having issues. All right. All right. So that's cool. That's cool. All right. Well then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think uh, in, in closing with this is, uh, there you go. So, so Matt says, damn, this is a show I didn't even know I needed. Thanks guys. And I appreciate that. I, I think I had to do it. This is one of those ones. Like I was, uh, you know, sent, uh, sent Derek a late night message on, uh, uh, on Saturday night and was just like, Hey, you know, like it feels wrong to not talk about Anne Rice. You know, she just passed away and you know, there's, there's so much here that, um, is, is so powerful. Uh, just, just through storytelling, just through, again, the oral tradition, the written word and inspiration, right? It, it, it really kind of writes itself, this type of stuff. When you only take what, what would it take me 90 seconds to think about it? I was like, Oh, never mind. I got it. <laughs> I got it. I know what we're going to do on Monday. And yeah. it's this. It had to be this, right? Ah, there we go. Rohan's back and you sound yeah. great actually. You fixed it. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Fixed it. You have to shake it sometimes, don't you? Yeah. Well, you have to stop doing that. Stop being nice to it and going, oh, it's okay. You're all right, but, uh, you know, it seems to make it work. Exactly. So grab it by the neck and shake it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We don't do that anymore because we're going to have arms and legs in about 10 years, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, well, exactly. And they'll fight back. <laughs> You'll be tied up in the corner and the computer will be doing the dishes. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, so I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? I know we've talked in the past about, um, uh, you know, Joseph Campbell and the rest of that and some of the storytelling and mythology. And I don't know. Uh, what are your thoughts on Anne Rice and uh, this vampire mythology and inspiration? Well, um, when you mentioned whether, say, because we were talking writing, um, you mentioned the, the, the challenges in life. And like say, mentioned Joseph Campbell and these his archetypes of certain um, you know, paths we take, like this warrior's path or discoverer's path, explorers and, and stuff. And I think, like say, it keeps popping up in these, these kinds of books because I think it just resonates with us. You know, it's like there's something, I think that's something to do with why the sort of oral tradition and storytelling is just so powerful. It's like it echoes across time, you know. As I was saying, people remember this stuff. And I think, uh, yeah, it's, I think some of these archetypes, though, it's like, it's almost, to me, it seems like you keep, the, some of these stories survive through history. It's almost like because they're important and they resonate with people. And that's why they sort of carry on. And then that, and then it, to me, then it seems it's almost like a holographic layering on that particular issue. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, in, like keep updating it in the Akashic records and the zeitgeist of humanity because certain parts of these stories, they're, they're our story. I mean, we don't know where we've come from. We don't know who we are, what we are kind of thing. We're only just getting to that bit. Do you know what I'm saying? That's like, well, square zero, isn't it? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, and, and it, 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 all of this too, like, kind of no matter what, even if we go like Lovecrafty and old ones coming through a portal type of thing, which we love to talk about, Lovecraft is my absolute favorite. Just that that mythology is just like kind of bone chilling. E- even that, right? It still traces back to reality, traces back to humanity, traces back to our relationship with the universe. It's like you can't tell a story that doesn't really go through like Derek was describing the human lens. Right. And so I think that's the beauty of all of it. Not just the inspiration, but the fact that these stories get pressed further and harder and, you know, like uh, we, we demand more of them for more entertainment value, but also for maybe shifting that dynamic of our reality. I think that's, that's really what this is all about. And Joseph Campbell's amazing with, with that whole idea the hero cycle. And it's good shit, man. This is, this is a, this is what it's all about in my opinion. Yeah, you two good points there. One, yeah, I think Joseph Campbell is just telling this, has discovered the story of where we come from, and Star Wars is real. So that's what I'll say about Joseph Campbell. But um, oh, what was the other point you made? Uh, oh, it slips my mind. Uh, Lovecraft. Yeah. Oh, I lost the it. human lens. Lovecraft, that was it. Lovecraft. Yeah, and the human lens and some of this stuff. Well, I was saying to Derek, what's, uh, what's the difference between the dream world and what's happening now and imagination so it's all consciousness right so if he's getting these things from dreams they exist somewhere right 
What, well, maybe. And I think that's part of it. Robert was describing that earlier, right? Like he, he said this before, that our job is as people to be storytellers. Because if we're not, what are we doing? It, it, it is one of the most important things. And, and I, think, I think the universe needs it because it does expand maybe that universal consciousness. If the universe is conscious, right? It, it's a pretty wide yeah, you. Yeah, and it goes back to what you were saying about if you don't tell that first story, it don't lead to the second one. Yeah, and what is this place? This is a no- Terence McKenna called it a novelty engine, but we're supposed to keep making more new experiences. And, and like you see, well, this shows a, a prime example of that. To see how the meanderings go, and say it takes you different places. But had you not done it, you wouldn't have known. And it's even and there's a there's a poem called uh, "Trip to Holland," which is about that where someone's supposed to go to Italy, and it's got the travel guide for Italy, been learning Italian, and gets on the wrong plane, goes to Holland. Now, to begin with, you got it, aren't you? Like, oh my God, what a waste, all this language I've learned. But no, if, had you not got on the wrong plane, you wouldn't have found out what Holland was like. Yeah, and you have a completely different experience to the one you was expecting, but it's totally brand new. And I think that's how the universe evolves. I think we're supposed to keep making new experiences and keep adding to the universe. Do you know what I'm saying? More and more richness. And then that's the cycle. So like, yeah, it's integral, this stuff. Yeah, and uh, like uh, and, and, and Derek adds exactly like something is trying to birth itself into existence via ideas. <laughs> that's pretty wild, right there. It seems like, right? It seems like I think so. That's that's what I think because it's like by the same token with the not telling the story, the same with reading the story and hearing the story. I don't consider myself a, a book reader person, but I read The Running Man and I read uh, The Way of the Peaceful Warrior. Man, and then books in sucked me in. You know, I didn't. You want to finish? You know, when if someone writes well, you know they've got you. They've, you're in there. And I'd, and had it not been for you know those two particular books, one's a uh, Stephen King, who was a uh, Richard Bachman, who wrote say, the Running Man, and uh, the Way of the Peaceful Warrior, or oh, you know, Dan Millman. Okay, those two books. I, had I not read those books, I wouldn't. I would have had no idea how much more depth there is in literature compared to the, like the movie version. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's in a common trope. Everyone knows that who reads. But when you discover that, it's like a whole new world. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It cha- things change, doesn't it? I, I think that's uh, again, right? Like we were talking about this. Uh, you know, the power of positivity and some other things. Right. Uh, recently, it's. Uh, but it's. It's. It's about the dynamic of that human lens. And I think that's uh, right. Like you, uh, clearly we have a ton of control over what happens here, even to the point where like Robert has said in the past as well, that maybe we actually control the universe. Our consciousness is the stick that stirs that uh, drink, um, which is wild to me, but uh, maybe not. I, I mean, maybe so, maybe so. Right. Personally, I think that's exactly, I think it's hit the nail on the head and canter on it with that one. Because I think that's what, you mentioned inspiration, and I, I tend to link that with creativity and to that thing that we call the light or your spirit soul, whatever, that bit. I think that's the manifesting mechanism, that's sort of what I'm trying to say. And that's why I often say to people, it's not, when I say to people, fire and forget, yeah, sometimes you don't want to, I don't want to, you know, take credit or this and the other. But when I say fire and forget, that's something else. When I'm saying I do fire and forget, I'm sort of also explaining part of the mechanism how I think this stuff works. Because I think you have to get out of your, well, at least for me, the way it works for me is you have to get out of your own way. Right. And then that, those energies, those, those things that are out in the ether, okay, that are zeitgeisting, that are starting to pull, they can flow through you. But you've got to get out of your way. Same with the remote viewers. You've got that's why they learn to draw quickly in remote viewing. You've got to learn to do them pictograms really fast before you start. Because you need to get out your own way. You don't want to take time thinking how to draw a person, because then your imagination starts coming in, you start adding assumptions and, and deductions onto things. So you've got to you've got to let it come in, drop it in, you know, get it on get it written down and let it go. And, and I think all of that creativity thing, and that's how you pluck things through and, and get like the pure creativity force, you know. I think it's an orgasm, organ energy, prana, chi. I think that force, whatever it is, I think that's what we're tapping into. And like you say, that seems to be the most powerful force that there is. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, like I've said before, I don't know if I said it here, but I've said before um, on, on the radio and to people that I, it's almost like, as, a, as, a, as an entity, we're like a hybrid in terms of we're an animal, okay, 
but we're also a light being. So it's like a chimp holding an infinity stone. Do you know what I'm saying? That could be bad news if you just leave it. But if you work on your animal nature and learn to understand it and work on your light nature and, and learn to understand how this stuff works and read your operating system, then boom, Shankar. Do you know what I mean? You've got an infinity stone you can wield. Oh, yes. I like the the, uh, the chimp with an infinity stone. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Great stuff, as always, from the mighty Rohan. Uh, we're going to wind this up, my man. Anything else while we got you on? No, that's cool, man. I just wanted to get them in. So that's great. Yes, it. it's brilliant. Good show. Yeah, and, 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 I'm glad you made the point to the listeners as well about how quickly these just happen. These things just fold. I only just caught that bit. But yeah, we just you just mentioned it, didn't you? And we talk, just talked. And, you know, 60 seconds later, you've got a show. Yeah, yeah it, it literally was like that. Like I sent a message to Derek. He sent it back. And by the time he actually answered me, I was like, never mind. I got it. <laughs> I got it. I already got it. I know what this is going to be about. And it's, uh, it is about that zeitgeist. It is about that, uh, like Robert said over in Rockfin just now, that it, it's sort of automatic writing. It's like uh, dipping into it, uh, uh, whatever that cosmic uh, storytelling apparatus is. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's speaking to us. Right, it's a it's. it's oh, I'll tell you a secret. I tell you a secret. What's that? When I write stuff and do music, I literally look up at forty five degrees and my eyes roll back a little bit. Sometimes I know I, I'm not joking because that's how it, that's it's kind of how it works. I'd let it go. I just that's what I'm saying. He's right. He's right. That is how it works. That is how it goes, bro. Sorry, it's quick off there. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. Uh, no, no, no cutting off among friends. It's all good. Uh, so great stuff. Rohan here has a podcast. It's called Exiled Minds. Check it out. Link in the description. Follow that podcast. Check it out. Uh, he's getting some traction in some different countries all over the world. And um, like I always say, the famous Liam Martin. Thanks for spending your time with us, bro. Thanks for the great call. Cheers, man. Thanks for that. I dropped a new trans track today as well. It's my first release. So nice. check it out. Awesome. There you go. Check it out. Check it out. All right. Let's get back to Jay. Jay, any thoughts on that? Just, um, Ron, I was saying stuff that I needed to hear today, you know, to get out of your own way. A lot of times people, you know, tell me, it's like, you just are way overthinking stuff. Just do it. And I, I do. I find that as... A little bit of, you know, inspiration in between what we're talking about amongst ourselves is just, you know, help each other out and stuff. You know, the simple little conversation that we have, even in the after hours, sometimes it's, in, it's stuff that makes the next day better or the, you know, the next step better in what you're doing. And I just, I don't know, I really appreciate the fact that we have this thing that you built, Mike, and, you know, all these great people come together and give their ideas and thoughts on everything. And we're, we are, we're becoming enlightened. I mean, I'm definitely smarter than I was before. There are conversations that we've had about topics that I would have never even stumbled across. And that's the storytelling part of it, that, you know, everyone's there telling their stories. And here we are, you know, learning all kinds of different things about ourselves, about each other, on how to do whatever it is that we want to do or have that courage to take the first step to do something just because, I don't know, I think it's great. You know, it's nice that we're remembering someone and the positive things that they've done, you know. God rest in peace, Anne Rice. Amen to that. Amen the fact that. that we spent a day talking about her and everything else like that, I'm sure she's pleased to see that that thus many people came together in an effort to remember her and talk about how they were inspired or they learned that, man, if you read the book, the movie, it sucks. It just, I mean, that was, I think Anne Rice, the whatever it was there with Tom Cruise, it just... That was not the book. It, you know, they skipped over so many things in it that just took away from it. I just, I don't know. That was probably the first movie that I saw after reading the book. Because usually I do it the other way around. You see the movie and then you're like, oh, I'm going to go back and read that book. You really don't get it, you know. But when you do it the other way around, I was like, wow, that's kind of disappointing. Especially when you spend fifty dollars, people see it. Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Good shit. Good shit. 
All right. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, indulging me and just uh, just just a moment to remember Anne Rice and remember again. Like I said, she was one of my heroes, and uh, like like um, it's one of those things where you you just by reading somebody's work you learn right you learn a ton just by watching somebody do uh, maybe a radio show like this or anything else right like watching somebody that's you know okay it's something else it's inspiring it's one of those things that like she she made me realize that okay there's you know she has a gift but it doesn't mean that like right like it doesn't mean the rest of us can't aspire to that as well it's a uh, i guess that's what inspiring is and that's that's the whole deal yeah rest in peace Anne rice uh, thank you all for indulging me in this conversation and uh, being part of it like i said uh, i'm me you're you together we're us and you see what a powerful thing it becomes uh jay let's do the jaytro i'm gonna give you uh, a little bit of music and uh, let's roll this Let's roll this. Let's go right about here. Wait for the beat to drop, okay? Yes. All right. See? Jay's getting getting pro with this. All right. So as we finish, this is the Mighty Jay Tro coming up. Did I miss the beat? Nope. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> there it is. You have a story inside you. It lies articulate and waiting to be written behind your silence and your suffering. And that's Anne Rice. Ah, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Uh, wraps it all up in a nice tight bow. And uh, she's saying exactly what I've been saying, right? Maybe the story of Magnus was exactly that. Maybe waiting for the right person to make into the vampire was exactly your story waiting to culminate in whatever form you wish it to be great stuff jay way to wrap that up bing bang boom you guys are the best rest in right uh, rest in peace and rice uh again uh thank you for inspiring a generation myself included uh, you were one of my heroes and uh thank you all for being part of this conversation tonight and uh if you haven't read Anne rice i recommend it she's definitely one of those ones sort of in the vein of hp lovecraft you read it and it, you're never the same afterward uh it's like it's like reading one it's like reading a textbook versus reading art it's two very very incredibly different things and uh, check it out. Amazing stuff. And uh, let's get the hell out of here. You guys are the best. Anything, uh, Rohan, while we got you on? Let's finish this effort up. I pre- appreciate those in- those uh, J trays, man. I love them. So thanks for that, Jay. Thanks, Rohan. 100%. 100%. Brene Sauce says 100. 100. Thanks, everybody, for listening. You guys know the drill. We will be back. The bad news is we're done. This is for Jay. The good news is, God willing, we've got tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Pacific, Monday through Thursday. We do Troubled Minds, and uh, we'll see you there. If uh, you can't get enough Troubled Minds, there's a whole podcast feed of hundreds, hundreds of episodes. There's like two, hold on, uh, 200 and, I don't know, 70 or something. If you can't get enough, go listen to the podcast feed. It'll also help the show. There's ads baked in, pennies, dimes, dollars. You guys know that. As we finish, it goes a little something like this. Be sure, be strong, be true. Thank you for listening. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night. Let it rip, boys. (laughs) I swear we get worse and worse at that. See you guys tomorrow night. Oh, uh, usually uh, a lot of us hang out in the Discord afterward. If you guys haven't joined the Discord, troubleminds.org, click the Discord link. We will see you there. Have a great one.